everybody. Welcome. Good evening. It is the Steel Toe Evening Show. It's the nighttime program where April and I come and hang out and talk to you guys, tell you what's going on, get to some stuff we didn't get to this morning and anything that might have happened since then. Uh, a lot of show notes. I think number one, the show note we start with is April is taking a big, painful, watery diarrhea shit. And uh, to quote her from about 13 seconds before the show started, I feel it in my kidneys. I feel it in my kidneys. Oh, good, sweet Lord, grant me release. Uh, again, I write these things down as they happen. I don't make them happen. Uh, she will be here when that shit is over, and I'm guessing the shit will be over at around 7.30, 7.45, so not too far from now. Oh, wait, she is. Uh, she's texting me from the bathroom currently. Uh, nope, that's Gino Bisconte. Uh, instead, texting me. That is not April uh, texting me. I thought about maybe just calling him until April got here, but, you know, do you really, do you really want to bother the guy? Do you want... I tell you what, I almost didn't uh, start the show on time today. I was watching uh, Chrissy Mayer's Wet Spot on Compound Media, and uh, Mersh and Royce were on there, and uh, I, I swear to God, they had this chick... Uh, I think her name's Alyssa, and she's like, she's doing that thing where like, you know how those women want to seem like bad bitches, but it's very see-through, and you see that it's kind of covering up for something else, and Mersh really started calling her out at one point. He really didn't give a shit. I mean, you could tell that Mersh was on his best behavior because he was on somebody else's show. He was a guest. But I think if it would have been on Nightwave or Revenge of the Sis, he might have kind of laid into this chick. Because she's she was doing this thing where she's like, I never go on dates. I don't go on dates ever. I just don't. I just, everything that, every relationship or whatever, it just usually starts as a friend thing. And then it just kind of becomes something from there. And, uh... I don't know. I just, she did that like three or four different times. And then finally, somebody said something. Like, finally, Merce just goes, well, what are you talking about? Like, what do you do? Like, maybe you should go on some dates, you know, to fight. I think he said at one point to fight loneliness and uh, the impending lonely death or something like that. But at any rate, we've got a very busy, uh, very busy show tonight. It should be a lot of fun. Many things to talk about. Uh, April's going to talk about her appearance on SimCast and all the shit that went down for us from that. I mean, that, it was a, a big night for Steel Toe, and I had nothing to do with it. It was all April, 100%. Um, it, it's like April's having to learn these lessons of the internet. You know, she like, you got to make... Nobody matters on the internet. What people say don't matter. And most of the things people are saying are just to rile you up anyway. Like, people don't have actual opinions about shows and stuff like that on Twitter. Here's the two opinions about shows. You guys are good. I like your, I like your show. Uh, you guys suck. I'm not fucking watching that. Those are two very fair... Both of those, by the way, if you watch Steel Toe, if you watch me, if you watch April, Johnny, anybody else, those are both, in my opinion well inside the parameters of logical discussion. Uh, you guys do a good show. Thank you. I happen to agree. Uh, you guys suck a barrel of dog shit. I could see where you get there from here. But, uh, like, when people are like, you, you know, you're not this, or you should do this. Or you, If, you know, if when you become a veteran of this business, you realize these are just dark, like, kind of jealous people who go that route. Best case scenario, they're just remarkably bored and they're just out for blood and they want to see if they can affect you. But worst case scenario, they wanted to do something like this. Like, I can't believe she didn't learn that during like the Mind Scepter hip star thing. Because like what she was going through this weekend is not near as bad as like what the Mind Scepter hip star people did. Because Hipstar has, like, a bigger audience than the other guy that was going after her now. I mean, that guy has no show and no audience and nobody. And this Hipstar guy, I mean, sure, it may only be a couple hundred views, but it's it's more than 20. And so she's had to learn a lot of, like, really, like, basic lessons about the internet uh, this weekend. And to see it all culminate with the Chrissy Mayer appearance, I thought that was really great. And they did a five-and-a-half-hour show. Oh, fuck me. A five and a half hour show. And she got like blitzed and blindsided by Alex Stein. 
And by the end of it, he had kind of backed off. And by the end of it, I'm sitting there messaging with Alex going, come on our show. Just stop fucking crying about a, a time we made fun of you. Come on the fucking show. We'll settle this like guys. And he's like, okay, do you do his show Friday? I'm like, yes. I feel. I, honestly, I wrote to Alex and I'm like, I feel bad that you took our criticism of two of your videos so hard. Like, I'm sure he's not offended by us talking about the Bubba appearance because that was him shitting on us. So I, I don't think I, you could uh, begrudge someone for responding to that. But like, Two of his videos out of like 10 we've done uh, covered on this show, eight of which we've gone, oh, that's funny. Or even like, that's fucking ballsy. Like, I thought the ballsiest thing Alex did was when he went to that, um, the drag, uh, drag queen story hour thing and those people had fucking rifles. These are mentally ill people. Like, these are crazy fucks. And they've got guns on them and you're going right up to them and going, hey, you look really tough. I'm really intimidated. And it's like, hey, look. I don't trust the mental stability of that guy not to put that fucking rifle in my mouth. So I, not only did I think that bit was funny, but I also thought it was very ballsy. So like my surprise that he, you know, that he took those two so choppy the way he did, I was like, fuck. I, I think like I've given myself this, this, um, this name of like, oh, I'm the most obnoxious guy. I can get under anybody's skin. And I sometimes I, I do that as like a gimmick, like to, you know, have some fun. I think it might actually be true. I think it might be a shoot. I think I might be the most obnoxious guy out there when I try to. Uh, but we're going to have him on Friday, and he's going to be fine, and we're going to crush this whole thing. And uh, I, I think I'm just going to say, look, man, I think if you're going to do this, especially venturing into the waters he's venturing into with all this politics shit, you got to get ready to hear a lot of bad things about yourself. You know, or you just got to surround yourself with only the people who say really nice things. Because he said uh, during Simpcast last night, you know, oh, as performers, you know, we're so autistic. And I was like, okay, I'm with you. He goes, we don't, we don't see the people who really like us. We see like the two who don't like, who, who aren't laughing. And I'm like, but you know what? He's new to the game a little bit. Like I've been doing stand up for 10 years. I've been doing radio for 15. I'm like, Opie, I've been doing it since I was 18. That was actually more stuttering, John, than Opie, but you get the idea. And I think as he does this more and more, he's going to realize that shit goes away. Like, the only noticing the two who aren't laughing. I, I, I used to be that way. And now I see the two people who aren't laughing, and I'm like, I just want to watch them the whole show and laugh at them not laughing. I want to be like, this is fucking great. And then you get to a certain part in the show where they haven't laughed for so long, you're like, now I don't want them to laugh, ever. Now it's a challenge for me to make sure these people fucking hate my guts. I really, I, by the end of this, if they come up and like me, I'm going to feel like we missed out on a happening. So we'll have him on on Friday. That came out of the Simpcast deal. And then uh, Nick Ricada, really cool guy. Uh, really awesome. We, uh, I, I wrote to him during Simpcast and I said, hey, come on the show. All these people on Simpcast, by the way, on the phones during the show. Like, they're typing away, and they're looking at the phone. And, like, I had to write to Nick Ricada at one point. I go, I'm sorry. I, fuck me. Go back to doing your show. You're a guest right now. Get off your phone. Uh, so we're going to have Nick Ricada on at some point. I think we're going to have him in the house, though. I think we're going to have Nick Ricada come to the show, and then, like, we'll go out after. Maybe, uh, maybe the night before we go to DabbleCon, because I want to leave Thursday morning for DabbleCon. Maybe have Nick Ricada on uh, on the show on we on a Wednesday evening show, and then maybe go out with Nick Ricada after that. That would be kind of fun. Go hang up, bring uh, bring small town uh, Nick Ricada out to the big city of St. Cloud, huh? Ooh, little mouse in a big country mouse in a big city. Oh, it was, but it was a lot of fun watching April do that and get laughs and do well and find out she don't fucking need me anymore. And then, uh, you know, go out on her own and do... You know how much ground her and I can cover? I can go on all the scumbag shithole podcasts. She can go on all the nice, good reputation shows. And Steel Toe covers it from both ends. April brings us all our above-board, decent people. And I bring the dredges and the scumbags. <sighs> can you see it? I mean, I don't, I don't see how this couldn't work out. Uh, then I was on Misery Loves Company on... Saturday, and that was a lot of fun. That was a great show. We went a couple of hours with uh, Kevin and Bob and Adam, and that was a, I mean, that was just a, a great time. I'd love to do that show again anytime. All right, let's get to you guys, and then we'll talk to April about all the Simpcast and Alex Stein stuff a little bit later. Tomorrow, we're going to do the Alex Stein uh, barstool thing from today. 
I didn't want to do that tonight. We've got a bunch of other stuff to get to, and the Alex Stein thing will keep until tomorrow. Uh, so we've got uh, we got some Brendan tonight during overtime. April, whenever I have Brendan, April goes, no, 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 no. You save Brendan for me. I want the Brendan Schaub stuff. So, you know, she goes on one podcast by herself, and now she's barking out orders. Can you believe that? Uh, and then tomorrow we'll do the Alex Stein thing. And like I said, uh, we'll get Alex on the show on Friday. And then, uh, I don't know, from there, we're still waiting on, um, fuck, my favorite guy, Perry Caravello. We're waiting uh, from Tom, uh, waiting to hear from Tom on when we can have Perry on the show. Uh, also, uh, Anthony was going to get back to us after Thanksgiving about coming on this show. I'm too much of a chicken shit to follow up. I'm like, Did you forget about me? He's in the process of moving to South Carolina. I don't want to bother my fucking radio uh, inspiration, for Christ's sake. Uh, so we'll, uh, you know, we should probably have Shuli on again before DabbleCon. I've had Carl on a couple of times. I like all those guys. I like them all. Listen to all their shit. Uh, let's go ahead and see what you guys have going on in the chat tonight, and then we will get to our first few stories. Thank you to everybody renewing your membership. We cracked 360 for memberships for the first time ever. And remember, uh, if you become a member, it knocks down our daily goal every month. So I think we went down another 10 bucks a show uh, this month because of the increase in members. That's very cool. Uh, we're hoping one day we have enough members on this show where we don't have a goal anymore. And because of all the generous people who have been contributing to this listener supported show, we are actually $200, uh, $210 away from tomorrow evening's goal. So we've already knocked out tonight. We've already knocked out tomorrow morning. Now we're on Tuesday evening show. So anything you contribute to the show tonight in the forms of Super Chats, Streamlabs, PayPal, which the links are all in the chat, uh, that's going to go to uh, Tuesday night's show. It has been two weeks since we've done a show that had a goal for that day. So that's very cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, Matthew says, hello from Sydney, Nova Scotia, home of the great Frankie McDonald. Love Frankie. Uh, someone says Twitch is really pissing me off, bro. Oh, I love to hear Twitch nightmare stories. I, I saw some other story. Uh, I, I didn't click on it and read it yet. I'll prep after the show, but I saw another story. Twitch is pissing off its creators and doing something stupid. I mean, the, it, Amazon had an alternative to YouTube that was well-funded and had a lot of people on it. And by God, if they didn't just fuck it up and like not even in response to anything, like they just fucked it up on their own it was oh i mean to, to watch so many unforced errors by like like a not an institution what would you call that by a company i guess twitch it's a remarkable fall uh why dad says i love uh, i love this show but i also peaked in high school yeah common thread common thread unfortunately uh Genta says, anyone have a link from MLC show with Aaron on it? You have to go to their Patreon, uh, Misery Loves Company Patreon, and uh, you can listen to it that way. Rusty Grammer says, all I really have to say about last night is that April, in no disrespect whatsoever to others, held her own. She is an oak. I'll stand corrected, April. You're an oak. I actually hate April right now because she bought a Doc Holiday shirt before I had a chance to buy one. She bought one that says, uh, luckily, this is not my favorite Doc Holiday line. Uh, she has one that said, uh, I have not yet begun to defile myself. You know what I would like? I would either like, how about a spelling contest or I will not be pawed at. Thank you very much. I like that one, too. Uh, yeah, a lot of people rave reviews. Uh, April did an amazing job last night. Uh, Courtney says, Alex is awesome. He must be playing with you. Is he that sensitive? I mean, look. I have to own my part in all this stuff. I'm a shit talker. I'm a smart ass. I'm a shit talker and I'm a, I'm obnoxious. I've been these things my entire career and I make fun of people. And I thought Alex had a couple of big misses. We played them on the show. I find misses to be hilarious. That's probably where I'm at fault here. I probably say, Hey, Alex's last thing was really good. You should go check it out. But then when I think he had a miss, I'll spend 15 minutes beating the living shit out of it. So I can understand where Alex is like, he doesn't, he doesn't see the 10 times where we talk about, hey, Alex did a good job. He deserves a lot of credit. Kids got big balls. He only sees the one or two times where we go, the fuck was Alex thinking on this one? This is just obnoxious. I also, and this is where I get with some of the people uh, we feud with, uh, or not feud, actually, I guess I stop using that word because people go fucking crazy. Uh, people we pick on 
I think pick on is a good word. I don't think it goes much deeper than picking on. Picking on and following. Uh, I, I think especially with Alex, as I watch like the barstool stuff and things like that, I think there's a lot of parts of Alex and I that are similar. And then there's a couple of really big glaring differences. Like the way he takes criticism versus the way I take criticism. Alex takes criticism by going, hey, why did you talk shit about me? Why don't you like me? Whereas I go, I bet you by the time we're done here, I can make you hate me 15 times more than you hate me right now. Like that's, I take being hated as a challenge or I either write you off. I either go, well, then get the fuck out of here. Or I go, oh, I think I can get this motherfucker to hate me even more. Whereas Alex kind of takes it personally. I think that's a big difference of ours. Uh, Alex will also go in front of people with fucking rifles and taunt them. And I think I'll, I'd rather just go back in the bar and have a drink. So I, I think that's a, but we both like being obnoxious. Uh, we both like kind of putting people on tilt. Uh, so there, there is that part of it. And I, I think our politics are relatively similar. Uh, he's probably a little more like traditional conservative than I am, but I think we're both a couple of, uh, libertarian-esque you know probably more right of center than left of center guys uh kenneth says uh, or i'm sorry stuttering john's fingernail says i heard alex Sto alex stoin i can't fucking talk alex stein is an annoying chosen one well i mean the name stein for god's sake uh yule gibbon says you are a little bit abrasive to be fair abrasive me what the fuck are you talking about i think the man has a point I think the man has a point. Uh, Justin Dabbler says, did anyone else see Perry's meltdown at the end of his stream today? No, but if you have a copy of it, send it to me. I always love a good Perry clip. I am a, a tried and true Perry Caravello fan, and I'm sure it was someone else fucking with him. And uh, that's why he melted down. Uh, Quadruple H says, Aaron's been doing this since he was 18. God! I've actually only been doing it since I was 19, and like for the last month of me being 19, so... Uh, the Opsters got me there. We did put a video up of uh, uh, Johnny and I busting Opie's balls today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, continuing on here with you guys. Uh, someone saying, what's Simcast? Uh, Chrissy Mayer's channel. Go check out uh, April's episode, if you'd like. Uh, Justin Dabbler says, go on Perry Caravello Live. It's the only podcast worth doing right now. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I, I like him. I love Perry. Uh, it was a nice surprise seeing April on Simpcast. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Raz of Chaz says, The first hour of Simpcast sucks so much that I fell asleep that gay guy wouldn't shut the fuck up and the one broad wouldn't stop playing with her hair. Look, I too, I, you know, I could tell April was pressing and like trying to make things happen in the first hour and I don't blame her. I did kind of, I finished up uh, Who Are These Podcasts with Gino and Carl uh, while that first hour went on. But after that, I thought it was uh, really, really solid. Look, man. If it's a five, what, a, f a five and a half hour show, that's, look, that's going to, there's going to be some lulls in it. Uh, BITW Awesome says the people were cool. The subject matter was lame. Fair enough. Uh, Guy Sartell says, I'll message Anthony as your agent. You will shut the fuck up and do nothing. I have worked 15 years in this business. I finally got a shout out, a follow, and a DM from the guy. You are not fucking this up from me. Do you understand? Uh, I do not need, you know, sometimes you need a Guy Sartel. Other times you need a normal person. You know, sometimes you need a hammer. Sometimes you need a beer. Uh, he is he is not a beer. He's a hammer with a beer. Uh, Phage lives with 999, says take my money. Thank you very much, buddy. 205 uh, away from tomorrow evening's. Uh, goal again thank you guys very much uh, stuttering John's fingernail says breaking news Kirk Cousins comes out as transgender hey he ain't coming out as transgender not the way he let his fucking nuts hang yesterday it ain't his fault the defense sucks ass and Dalvin Cook decided to drop the ball on the floor instead of throw it I actually liked um, I like that play where they hand off to the running back and he jumps over the line and chucks it to like a, a backup tight end I like that play you just, you know, make sure your running back doesn't shit his pants and drop the ball when it's time to run it. That would be nice. Uh, April ruled those simp sleuths. That's, uh, I mean, I think we can enjoy what April does without <laughs> besmirching the reputation of the others. Uh, standalone Kcorn says, saw the Vikings are the first 10-3 and three team in NFL history to have allowed more points than they have scored. Isn't that fun? 
Uh, the tax uh, theft is uh, the taxes theft says let April know that I'm currently shitting too. Hashtag shit buddies. Yeah, but hers is probably far, far, far more uh, vile and uh, lethal than yours is. Uh, Kane J says creating drama makes content. Alex said that. Well, I mean, you know, he certainly does that. Uh, Gray Idol says, don't forget, Farron Balanced is now a subscriber. Well, look at us. Farron was in our chat today. I saw that. It's like a news lady, for God's sake. Uh, Alex did pay her a compliment and said uh, she is his favorite stepmom, which is uh, uh, very sweet. Because, you know, April, April sometimes only, like Alex, only hears the negative things and not the positive things. That was a very sweet thing for Alex to say. Oh, my God, Alex is moving in on my bitch. It's on, Stein. Me and you on Friday. See, now I don't know if he takes that shit seriously. I don't. Do you ever feel like a bully? Like, I never feel like a bully when I'm doing this stuff. Watching Alex Stein last night, I felt like a bully. I did. The other guy, fuck that. I don't feel bad about that at all. It's got to be done now, but I, I don't feel bad about that at all. Alex, I felt like a bully because he just really does seem like an innocent in a way, maybe I'm being duped. I don't know, but he seems like an innocent. So when I when he came in guns a blazing and he was, you could tell he was hurt by the the things I'd said about him. I'm like, God, I feel like I like I hit Lenny. I felt like a piece of shit. Uh, Redbeard says uh, while all the other gals talked like they were at a slumber party, April maintained professional composure. You should be proud. Well, she did kind of want to be the more butch guy on that show. She wanted to wear her camo and talk about hunting and shit like that. Uh, Rusty Grammer says picking on and fucking on people is our favorite sport. The Vikings being 10 and three is spare parts, but we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Uh, Joe E says, Chad shit on you. But I'm sure he did, but I'm sure it was a meltdown. Bob Levy wrote me today and he just said, dude, the guy says the same shit over and over. I mean, that's why we're kind of done with him. He blew his stack. He lost his mind. And now you're just kind of like. I mean, you're like, at what point do you just go, poor guy? I don't want to be responsible for a guy hurting himself. And that's where I feel like it's going if we don't stop this shit. The guy's going to... Look, I'm in this to have fun. And I think a guy getting angry because he got made fun of is fun. I think a guy drinking all hours of the day and, and, and losing his mind, I, I'm, not in, I'm not here to do that to people. I'm, I'm going to pull back the reins. Uh, Alex looks sensitive as fuck. Bad look. I didn't know that him and Nick Ricada had a problem. There was some really weird energy between Stein and Ricada on that episode, and I'd like to talk to both of them about it. Uh, the Taxes Theft says, Aaron, are you going to address uh, the elephant in the room? No, because, that again, I'm just going to say to you, buddy, and I'm going to say to everybody else watching our show, I'll leave the rest of it up to him. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for a guy hurting himself. I, I don't... Look, I can't sit here and claim the moral high ground and say, hey, man, this is a level I'm not, he's going to a level I'm not willing to go to. That ain't cool. That's not what I got in this for. And then me go, oh, I'll just keep pushing until somebody hurts it. Like, no, that's, look, somebody breaks like that, then it's no fun. Now, you just, now, I'm, just, now I'm just a big bully. Anything else I do. Uh, you'll have that Bill Schultz slot in no time, says Bumba Clo. Ah. If you do a show, you always think your show is better than the other guy's show. So I'm not I'm not shitting on Bill Schultz. I'm just saying I find myself more entertaining. But then again, I'm a massive egotist. Uh, Aaron, will Simpcast let you be the gay man on the panel next time? You never know. You never know. Uh, Stevie J says, I wasn't ever a fan of Brittany Venti, but she won me over last night. And April did great. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Mad Max Martigan says, the only thing that might fuck up your chances with Ant would be if he find out found out you say the N-word more than he does. Wait, no, wait a minute. I Scotty Faye says, getting close to January, Vikings fans, time for the annual letdown. Uh, one of my comedian friends has what he said, he says it's a hacky joke, but he has a joke about the Vikings. Um my um I, I have to get it's something like I have to get all my Christmas shopping with my Vikings debit card uh done. I'm gonna butcher this so bad. I have to get all my Christmas shopping done early because just like my uh, just like the Vikings, my debit card doesn't work after Christmas. It's not it's not very nice at all. Uh, Gray Idol says MLC was great today. All about steel toe and heel. Well, here here's what I'll ask you: uh, Were Kevin and Bob nice to the show? Because I know they like us. Uh, I'm not gonna. 
get into personal conversations. I'll keep that private between the three of us. But I know I know where they stand. I know how they feel. But I also know, look, they have a fucking sh they have a show to do. Uh, but I'm hearing that we were very well stood up for uh, in the chat. Well, that's very cool, guys. Thank you. You're a you're a loyal uh, bunch of fucking psychopaths. Uh, the traffic in African says April either drops little rabbit turds like fishing weights or she paints the bowl. There is no in between. The man ain't lying. The man ain't lying. Uh, let's continue on here. Uh, someone says we're going in circles. I just want to catch up with you guys and then we're going to get to all of our stuff. Uh, that FTX guy was arrested. Yes, we are going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Turtle with five bucks says not a bully. You're going to be the master splinter of the haters of Steel Toe. Yeah, I just want to go, this, family. You call this and that up there, family? I'm the Casey Jones. of. Uh, I'll say this, I love MLC, I love that show. They do have a few fans that have completely fucking broken from reality and are just full-blown Twitter psychos. I mean, you just got to mute them and move on with your day because I don't think they like anybody. I think they just want to find someone and make them hurt themselves. Like, they just want to pick out who they see as the most vulnerable person and just see if they can get them to do something stupid. And I don't know. that That's not what I get into this for. Uh, but thank you, Turtle. And thank you, Cerberus, says I need to poo. However, I cannot uh, as I I cannot as I need to secure this lumber before I roll, roll toward my destination in Texas. Well, I you have no idea how happy it makes me that I know that. Uh, 190 away from tomorrow evening's goal. Lando Walker says compound has a lot of open spaces on Friday. Wink, wink. It's look, I think this show is a long way from getting a phone call from anyone there. Uh, I would be honored, but I don't, I, I'm not expecting it. Uh, sorry. We'll ooh, let's just here. Let's just catch up. Uh, Kevin was funny. Bob was funnier. That's very nice. Uh, Gatlingburg bears says big fan of steel toe, but I can see April pegging you with her Carhartt jacket on. How do you know that I don't ask? How do you know that I don't ask? All right. I don't like that you think it's her idea. Uh, Bob loves the toe. All right. Great. Uh, did the pretty girl ever talk about the first time she got her fanny eaten, says James. Uh, my my uh, gal, uh, not, not, a, not, the, not the ass being eaten type, unfortunately. Uh, Flashy Vic says, uh, what will come down first, your Vikings or the Christmas decorations? See, none of this is helpful. How is any of this helpful? Helpful. Uh, Guy Sartell says, you're Casey Jones from the Ninja Turtles? Yes, I am. I am. I'm Elias Codius. Uh, oh, boy. Stuck in the middle says, so close to 7K. What a ride since you first hopped on the YouTubes. Yeah, how far away are we? We're like 40 away from 7,000. We said let's get to 7,000 by Christmas, right? And we are a ways away from Christmas. We're 45 subs away from 7,000. We got a nice bump from MLC and a really nice bump from uh, Simpcast as well. Uh, thank you, Ryan the Garbage Man, for the five bucks via PayPal, 185 away from tomorrow night's goal. Thank you guys very much. Uh, holy shit, you're only 50 subs away from seven. Yeah, very good. And BITW Awesome says almost 1 million views. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on that. Uh, I got to keep an eye on that because I think we should do something fun for those 1 million views. Uh, you're playing my lowly Colts next week. Well, yeah, I look, I we have uh, we have enough on our plate to worry about. I, I don't think anything's a gimme for us right now that like our, our winning games is based on our defense pulling a pick or a sack out of their ass in the last uh, in the last minutes of a game. You can't keep surviving that way. Uh, Aaron is going to strip at 7,000. That is a rumor. I'd like to squash that right now. Uh, Triple N says countdown to 6 million. Uh, I don't know. I think it's more of a countdown to like uh, 1.65 million. But, uh, you know, people can argue about logistics and numbers and things like that. Uh, when do we get to come to a Steel Toe live show? Well, if I weren't so fucking terrible at promoting, I tell you what. We could do, uh, we're doing a live comedy show. We're doing a stand-up comedy show on January 21st at Partners Pub in Sartell. If you're a VIP, get in touch with April. Claim your two free tickets. We'll put you on. I got to get the tickets up for sale on Eventbrite because I'm, ju I'm just so terrible at promoting these. But uh, we're going to do that January 21st. And I hope you guys all come out if you can. Uh, I really do. Uh, James says DabbleCon. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be at DabbleCon. 
Uh, April and I will be there, and it'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, if you want to come out to Roch- lovely Rochester, uh, New York, in February... Come join us. I, I hear it's lovely that time of year. Uh, Samuel with five bucks. Thank you very much, buddy. 180 away from tomorrow night's goal. You guys are the best audience out there. Uh, I'm begging you, start Rumble as a backup. I have a Rumble. I just have to get the actual channel part of it all set up. But I do have a Rumble. Turtle says, wish I could get there for the live show. I don't have the cash to fly out. Uh, Yul Gibbon says, I'm going to try and make it to the next live event. Great. Uh, Robert says, Levy is an angry boomer. I don't find him funny. I like Bob. Uh, He should retire and stick with hitting the early bird special at Golden Corral. He sounds like he gargles around with glass. Aaron is the new guard. Bob has been a great uh, mentor type to me. So, uh, and I laugh at Bob on a regular basis. So I I do have to disagree. Uh, Stuttering John's fingernail says, couldn't be a more beautiful place in February than Rochester. You're right. Uh, all right, let's go to the stories. Thank you, guys. You've been a very... Oh, shit, you're here already? Well, fuck my ass. Goddamn, son, I'll take a beer, you piece of trash. What? Give me a couple of beers, a couple of whiskeys, a margarita. I'll drink them all down, and then I'll stomp a mud hole in your ass and walk it dry. Alex Stein, you stupid son of a bitch. No, I'm... T- Alex, I'm teasing. These are only jokes. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to make him uh, feel bad. That's my friend. It's my friend, too. He's going to be my buddy. He and I are going to be totally cool. He only, he's only your buddy because he couldn't bully you. If you, he, he really kind of thought you would just kind of back down and cower. And then when you didn't, he's like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, it's fine. Here, this, he actually kind of pulled one of those, like, he went, yeah, April, what do you think of that shit? And you're like, it's fine. Uh, it's cool. And then he's like, Oh, well, you know, I just get a little sensitive sometimes. And, uh, you know, sometimes I only see the people who say ma- bad things and not the people who say nice things. You're like, you, you know, you almost look at them. You go, why don't you just fucking start with that next time <laughs> instead of going with because everybody on the show kind of thought, you know, he was being an asshole. Oh, I- oh there you go. Let's unmute you. So, how, oh, I'm sorry. You go on a show for five and a half hours and all of a sudden I'm a big piece of shit and you're the pro. I'm sorry. I didn't hit the button. Why don't you just recount the whole story? Were you there? I was watching. Did you get yelled at by Alex Stein? No. No, I will on Friday, though. God, I love that kid. <laughs> Let's be friends. So now, uh, but everyone on the show kind of thought he was a, being a dick. Yeah, I got talked to. Well, no, like I didn't get talked to about that after the show, but the rest of us girls at the end of the five and five hour and 48 minute show were yes. like, holy shit, that guy came on hot. yeah. And I don't. I think you missed it. I think if you watched it back, you'd kind of you'd kind of catch it because it's something you have to see as a viewer, I think, and not be actually involved in the show. There's some weird heat between him and Rakeda, man. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Some at all. really I weird, think, really weird heat between him guys, and Rakeda. Why do you guys fuck up these mics every day? Johnny was saying that you fucked up nope, the mic. I didn't do this. Johnny's saying it was fucked up when he got here. Um. Ten dollars from Hadouken says, "Good job on Simcast, April. You rock." Thank you. I. That was obviously, for anyone who watches that show, it's incredibly different from this one. This one's very fast-paced. You know, you got two people to bounce off of. And that show last night, we had anywhere from, like, four people to, like, six to seven people sharing screen time and, you know, finding a spot to talk and when to take breaks so the other people can talk. And it's very... I'm so proud of how it went, honestly, because it's such like a learning experience for me, especially to be on there for five hours and 48 minutes with some really, I mean, really cool people. I'll be honest. The the show I was on was better because uh, what Simcast needs is someone to stop every few minutes and go, and Gino's not funny. Gino's gay. Like Gino's not funny and he's gay. (laughs) It's always, it's always nice when you think you've got a role going and then Kevin goes, that's like Gino. He's gay. We had a little bit of yelling last night. Just there was. a little bit. I don't And it was uh, all directed right at me. Okay, but wait a minute. <laughs> Let's be very honest. These oh. are two different leagues of yelling. Kevin Brennan would make Alex Stein shit in his pants. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I was I will be honest, I wasn't expecting that at all. I knew he'd say something like passive aggressive shitty to me at some That's point. That's all once it he was, realized was passive was. aggressive shitty. He was yelling though. That guy was upset and I felt bad about it because I well 
Can I talk you to did, him? Okay, are we, you did. Are we you kind of, but you backed down a little because you did say so you shit on him a, a bit on this show. Of course I did, yeah. but I don't mean any of it. It's all like I said last night. It's very much like one performer looking at another one and critiquing their stuff. And I do believe there was probably two instances, like the Vegas council meeting and the baby killer video. Where we, I thought I liked that one. Corey mm, shit on that one. I don't know. Somebody said, though, that it was just too much, like you needed something else to say than... Corey oh, did. Baby that killer. was Corey. Corey didn't like okay, that well, one. well, somebody said that. Oh, one. no, that was... Uh, you're thinking of the um, uh, Beto, the Beto O'Rourke yeah. one. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, there was also the one where he was chasing that lady around. You're not helping. So well, I'm being honest. Um, so there was a couple that we didn't like. You know, we critiqued kind of harshly and stuff. But there's so many things that I love that that guy does and that you right. love that that guy does. Yeah. So I felt so shitty that that had apparently hit home so hard because him and I shared screen time last night for probably about 10 minutes before he finally addressed me. Yeah. And he just kind of said, so, hey, April. I see my, I see my favorite <laughs> stepmom. April's here for Steel Toe. Oh. oh, you guys don't like me very much, do you? You guys say a lot of mean stuff about me. And... It was like, even though he was yelling, I could depth, like, I'm listening to it as a host and I was smiling because I'm like, as, as much as he's giving April shit, I'm like, oh, God. I hear, I'm like, I hear pain in the man's voice. I don't smile at pain. I was so excited to finally have that interaction with him. Uh, I really do enjoy a lot of the stuff he does. So I did think it was truly an honor to share screen space with him, even just to be able to say hello and meet him. But I was so like thrown, I guess, that he was so ultimately upset with me. I had no idea that was coming. Um, and I had, I think, six other, besides myself and Alex, there's like six other people on the screen with us at the and time, too. They were all watching this happen. I don't know if you noticed, but everyone on the screen was going like this. I was looking right at him. I don't know. They were like... I, the I We talked about it after the show and about how aggressive it was. But like at the time, I just looked at him. I thought I handled it. Very well. I talked him down from the ledge a bit, and I'm like, hey, look, that's all about performing. I don't really... What are you doing? Go ahead. I'm what? Just, I'm going to do a bit. Okay. Go ahead. I basically talked him down, and then we're friends. He said I'm his girl before he yeah. left. You're my favorite stepmom! That was actually a little Kevin Brennan at the end there. Uh, I just want to do one thing really, really quick. Um... one quick deal and then god damn it don't fuck this up for me you fix your mic god you son of a bitch I'm gonna be upset why are you calling him your call has been son of a fuck I was just gonna yell you know you're gay you're not funny why? We're talking about Alex right now. It's kind of fun. That was a really big thing last night that happened. It was a huge thing. We've been talking huge. about it all morning and all evening. I couldn't believe it. I Not only did I get to meet and hopefully befriend Alex Stein last night, because I really do like the guy, um, I got to meet Nick Ricada for the first time ever, which I love that guy too. And that guy turned out way cooler than I ever would have assumed. Like uh, all oh, Nick's the, a, no, Nick's a really good. All guy. the uh, conversating we did and stuff. He's so fun. He's so relaxed, chill, everything. Very smart man. Likes his whiskey. He pulled out a bottle of Angel's Envy, which I ah, totally that dug. is one. Of my, that's my favorite. Um, apparently the guy lives like super close, so we could all be, you know, getting together. But well, we don't. um, yeah, but yeah, that was like there was a weird. Like, Alex got really girly gossipy for a little bit about some guy, and then Nick Ricada's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Alex's well, like, I know this from other people. It's like, guys, 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 boys, boys. He's wanted to go, boys, 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 break her up. I think that was just a little bit of Alex trying to stir the shit a little just because a lot of people on the show personally knew the people that he was talking about, yeah. like, in their personal lives. Yeah. Um, to a point of like staying over at these people's house and stuff. But, and then um, Alex is like, he's a dirty cheater. And yeah. Like, and <laughs> I, I actually did enjoy him at that, at, no, on it's, that part. It's totally fine. And I had no horse in the race because I don't know the people he was talking about. I still specifically. don't. I still have um, no idea who it is. I know their names. I don't know. I can't like confirm or deny anything that was said about them though. So I don't want to say their names. Um, it was fine, except everyone else was kind of like, dude, we don't have proof of any of this shit. And they're That's my friend. That's what Nick said. So he's I don't like, want to talk yeah. about it yet. Oh, you no, know? I know. <laughs> he just no, has, I think he's just stirring the shit a little. He's I think it was a little bit, of, little bit of the autism. Just like not taking the social cue. Well, of like, you know, like he said last night, anyone that gets on the screen has a little bit of the tism. So. I don't know what he's talking about. 
Uh, <laughs> Joe with 10 bucks says all the girls on Simpcast were mid except for April. Uh, right. David with 999 says Brennan would sunstein hard and Bob would laugh. Yeah, that's just kind of a different level of hostility, I think, in, uh, in Kevin. Kevin's one of those guys where you're like, God, he's funny. He's a good time until you like get on his bad side and you're like, I'm going to go hide in another country for a year or so. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him yet. Uh, Cliff says, give April a couple of years. Uh, April will be a general of the web podcast. I don't know what that means. If there's a ranking. I don't either. I don't know. Stevie J says, Aaron, there is no time to apply for an extended auto warranty. Uh, how did you know? How did you know? Uh, Peter says, uh, well, I'll see now. We're just talking shit about Alex. That's not going to uh -oh. get a, anybody anywhere. Uh, sounds like some swinging is in the future for Steel Toe. Yeah, April's a little innocent. I don't think she understands how some of this plays for some of you rotten sacks of shit. What do you mean? In this audience. Oh, they're going to, they'll run with that now. Like, oh, April wants Alex. But, like, oh, there's God, no, you only say that because I'm a female. There's that's no, all that's uh, said. There's no, um, <laughs> there's no being nice on, the, uh, on a, a show like this because it'll go right to, Oh, she said something so, nice about a guy. Right. She wants to fuck him. That's I've started realizing that lately because anytime I have something complimentary to say about a male, it's always, oh, they're fucking now. Yeah. Sure. They, yeah, they never do that when I'm like... I'm sure uh, Alex has plenty of people throwing themselves at him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So many of his yeah, stature, two, I'm sure. Yeah, two black ladies at fucking Barstool. That's who's throwing themselves at him right now. I saved myself Holy from watching the shit. video yet. I'm very excited for it. Roland says, for a port-finished whiskey, I'd go with a Woodenville port cast. It's like 45 bucks, too. Well, aren't you... That sounds kind of gay, what you just did. But thank you. I appreciate the suggestion. <laughs> you must have... I don't remember saying anything that harsh about him. I know we critiqued him. You... You shit on a he, few. Boring, not funny, this is lame. Okay, shit like that's, that. that's fair. I don't know yeah. if you want to step farther than that, though. I don't know, because he... Just louder. Okay, because he really did not seem to like you Well, here's what all. I did. I made jokes. Like, you would just go, oh, this is so lame, it's boring, it's like... I think what happened was, like, he came after you, and in order to survive it, you kind of threw me under the bus, which was fine. I didn't give a I'm shit. I'm the one on the show. You're not. But you're like, <laughs> like, you're like, oh no, I didn't say those things. My husband, like, you kind of cowered and threw me under the bus a bit to kind of save your ass, because I, or you just forgot the shit you said, because you were the one who would go, oh, this is boring. Oh, Alex, stop. This isn't any good. But then I'd go I a step. I didn't deny that I did that. But then I'd go a step further and I'd like make a joke about it and do my thing. So. I, I get it. He's look, he's a sensitive guy. What are you gonna do? Uh Steve Six String says April was awesome on that never ending Simpcast Marathon program. Did some praying. Did you pray? Uh Vic Magania wanted to pray in the beginning because he's dealing with a whole lot of haters right now after his uh underpants deal. Who gives a shit? You kind of showed your dick a little bit. Who gives a fuck? He did not show any dick, actually. Who cares? <laughs> Lean into it and go, oh, my dick was out. Blah. Like just fuck. These people don't matter. They don't matter. I got to get on that Simcast and talk to that these guy. Broads. That guy, maybe. He's a sensitive dude. Vic is almost, like, I've got a kind heart. He's far kinder than I ever would be. So that stuff you could tell really made him sad. But that's, I think, where it stopped. He's more one of those people that wants to, like, turn it around and, like, pray for those people that, like, want to hurt him. No. And, like, wish better for them. They're not. That's a wasted prayer. Pray for um, a kid with cancer. Don't pray for these I'm people sure to get does. better. I'm sure he does. He seemed very religious, very into that. But, like, why not just instead turn it around and go, oh, did you guys see my dick last week? <laughs> like, who cares if someone on the internet says you whipped your dick out on a podcast? Like, ultimately, who cares? People were making fun of the type of underwear he wore. Right. Like, who, like it again. Very, it was funny. The internet but. is such a childish place, and people who take it seriously, it's so childish. It's like... Who gives a fuck? Most of these people, if we had the laws we had in the 60s, would be in an insane asylum. They'd be in a mental institution. And so what? They say your dick was out or your underwear was on a podcast. They didn't say you were a pedophile. They didn't say you were fucking your dog. They said, eh, the guy's underpants were I out. actually don't know what the what any of them said. I do. He I, didn't specify about any of it. Yeah, he dropped his camera in his lap and he didn't have pants on. Who gives a fuck? Right, and Chrissy turned the camera off immediately right. when that happened. So. I gotta, I'm got i going to teach a course on teaching people, like, look, here's how you're not so fucking sensitive to this shit. Because then people stop. Because they're like, oh, it doesn't bother them? Well, what am I wasting my time for? I'll go fuck around with this other idiot. Uh, thank you very much to Fred. What do you got there? 
I was just making sure I didn't forget anything. Why? <laughs> Thank you to Fred for the 1999 130 away from tomorrow night's goal. Uh, it's because Vic was me too He has to be careful. Oh, was he really? He got he got the old me too. That's he's kind sick. of like a an interesting guy too. Like he's a a voice actor and stuff like that for like a lot of anime shit and like Dragon Ball Z and like Star Trek something or other. Yeah. No, he's I know I know cool. who he is. He's a he was. He was incredibly nice. But that's like guys like that who are nice. You just want to say, like, we need to get you an edge. Like, and I don't give a fuck edge to go with your niceness. And then you'll be set. Like, wanting people to like you, especially people who will see you drop your camera in your lap and turn it into something. What the fuck are you even doing reading that guy's shit? Well, kind of like Chrissy said last night, if I had been Chrissy and I realized there was, like, no dick out once the camera fell, I would have probably left his camera up there right. and made a thing out of it. Like, how funny would that have been? Exactly, and it would have saved him, like, a lot of harassment I and think shit. that would be very funny. Like, our cameras can't just fall like that, so we're never going to, like, have an underwear slip, per se, but maybe you I'd won't. like to think that would have been a funny bit. Uh, 1999 from Fred once again, 115 away. Thank you. All right, I'm getting some info here from some people. Uh-oh. He was a voice actor. The Me Too stuff got him blacklisted. Nick Ricada was his lawyer. Vic's whole life was ruined. He's um, still doing stuff, though. He's still working. I think they mean, like, what he used to do is ruined. Like, he can't okay. do that shit anymore. Uh, you remember B. Dabbler? The yes. guy with the, the, the mask. mask on? Yeah. I fucking love B. Dabbler so much. He's so funny. Uh, he made an Opie Christmas video. And it was just, he just cut out clips of Opie saying, the first, I don't want to play the whole eight minutes of this, but, like, the first minute is him going, he just edited Opie saying cheers. Like, you know, the obnoxious cheers. way Opie says cheers. I don't know why I thought this was so funny, but B. Dabbler's one of my favorites. I like his production value, too, for a channel with, like, 900 subs, and he's got awesome. Greetings, my Dabblers, and welcome to a very special Christmas episode full of holiday cheer. And then he just the does the first sip of coffee. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Right? Got the mustache mug today. What's in the applause? With that, we say cheers. Oh, new mug today. Cheers to Baker Mayfield doing the impossible. Cheers once again. <laughs> Proper way to hold your coffee cup. Cheers. cheers. Nice oh. little story because I'm using the coin collector mug today, even though I'm not a coin collector. That's interesting. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I guess I got fired up by coins today because I'm I got a coin collector mug. Uh oh! <laughs> what a great show! <laughs> oh my god! Cheers! Cheers! It's just he dabbles a dickhead. Hi, Ryan McCain with the brilliant. This is all brilliant. That is a stuttering John reference to Richard Lewis saying to John while he was doing his red carpet thing. He went brilliant. This is all brilliant. All right. Brilliant, this is all brilliant. So that's some dumb thing. Can, can you explain <laughs> See, that? Opie does this thing where he's like, oh, thank you. That's very nice. Oh, that's dumb. But then he sees it like three or four times. Yeah. He goes, all right, you guys are fucking with me, aren't you? He's so paranoid. Somebody sent that to us this morning during the show. They sent me a brilliant, this is all brilliant. I just read it. Oh, thank you. I'll take it. Sure. That's what I'm talking about with like internet shit. If someone fucks with you, who cares? Just go, oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Very nice. But my favorite uh, B. Dabbler work was the, do you, do you remember the Opie light video? The one where his light wasn't on in his studio and his yeah. out? Yeah, Opie, Opie's light wasn't on. Let me see if I that can. That is a good uh, one. That's Opie actually. Opie light camera. That, that video is actually in the Simpcast intro. I know, and funny. I wish I could find it from uh, B. Dabbler. But I can't. Oh, well. He's like, Opie's just sitting there going, oh, the light on this camera. Cameras don't do light. You have to get a light. There's no... If you guys find that one, please send it over Go to, to the me. Simcast intro and just skip a little forward. It's right there. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. We could maybe do that. We got to play this video later tonight of uh, these these black women who do a podcast. And they're like, no. They're, <laughs> Not they're, a good start. No, they're great. Um, they're against racial mixing. And they just go like fucking totally based fucking for like, uh, yeah, for like a minute. They just go off on, no, I don't want these black guys having sex with these white women. It okay. diminishes our blackness and the black blood we have in our body. And I'm like, fuck yeah. It's amazing because you can put these like Ooh. 20 or 30 something year old black women in there with like a 70 year old from like Mississippi white guy. Along. And they'd be like, what'd you say about that? I don't want our black man marrying 
white women, it dilutes our black blood. And he's like, I feel the same goddamn way. I think we should all stick to our own kind. I like this. That's how we're going to get like the unity that people want. You're not going to get... Because yeah. those of us who, who don't care if there's like interracial marriage and stuff, we just kind of go about our day anyway. So we don't need to unite with anybody. Right. We're all just kind of doing our own thing. But you got to get the people who are black and white and think they hate white people or hate black people, you just got to introduce them to the right white and black people <laughs> that will agree with them on everything, you know? I mean, Jesse Lee Peterson would agree with a lot of white people. Jesse Lee Peterson, there's a lot of white people he should meet. And maybe some black people, too. Uh, and Mersh, what's, what's wrong with black people? <laughs> it's just so great. <laughs> Why did God put black people on this earth? Black people uh, were put on this earth to, what was it, destroy? To do bad things. To do bad things. <laughs> Fuck. That's a quote. Uh, so. Uh, Not good. Chrissy Mayer <clears throat> Simpcast. Yeah, so in her intro is the Opie it's, thing. Yeah, it's right there. It really is one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> yeah. In that. Oh. Been a great day. Did you have a great birthday? It's in there. That was still the intro. I'm no, playing. like when you were scrolling it, you had the Opie clip right there. Oh, there it is. Okay. I yep. got I got to go back a little bit though because when you're There it is. It's coming, guys. It's worth it, I promise. Enjoy their pretty faces. I, I don't know if this is real, but it's thanks for the 10 this. bucks down horizons. Could you shout out to my friend Nick? <laughs> oh, I okay. You got me. He's a huge f- fan of yours since the Stern days. <laughs> Nicholas. He won't say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Sexism (laughs) in gaming. This one. This is my favorite. I think, uh, so I guess we're not doing, um, I guess, uh, wow. How the hell do I, let me see something. You need a light. That makes it worse. (laughs) Wow, this camera is, this camera is even worse. It doesn't matter. You need a light. Oh, this camera is even worse. All right. It's not the camera. Figure it out. The the thing is. Cameras don't emit light. um, (laughs) You need a light. The thing is that I uh, need a light. You need to buy a light. Yeah, this is ter- wow. This is way worse than the other camera. Um, right, because you need a light. <laughs> it's bothersome. Because what I want to do is I, I want a camera. Look at his hair. <laughs> that can light up my pretty face. Cameras don't light. Also get the, the glorious sunrise behind me. So how are you in any kind of broadcasting for all these <laughs> years? Go back to the drawing board again. We're wrapping up anyway, so I guess we'll just end this in silhouette mode. Let's just call it silhouette mode. The silhouette filter. Um, <laughs> what? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm distracted by the camera. Camera's bugged. There's nothing it, to it, do it with it. It got uh, worse. I, I, forget it. Because I went and got a couple. Uh, it's literally not the camera, sir. It, uh, like, Opie kind of reminds me of the like the seahorses guy. Like he'll just kind of bounce around. And, like, oh, sure. The seahorses. Uh, Fred with another 1999 says, won't let me give more than 20 at a time. So enjoy the 20 barrage. Oh, well, Aww. thank you, buddy. We are an even one hundo away thank from you. tomorrow evening's, uh, overtime goal. Appreciate that. All right. So many things to talk about. Do you want to go right to the black ladies then? Since yeah, I already mentioned them. You already talked about This it. is the, uh, a podcast called, and it's about the size of Chrissy's channel. Okay. Uh, it just maybe does a few more views. That's respectable. Uh, but it has the same amount of subs. It's called See the Thing Is. And they had a conversation about interracial dating <laughs> that, again, I think a lot of people in like uh, rural areas of the United States would take these gals to dinner uh, over this take. Uh-oh. Only the girls probably would not accept because it would be a date and they would be a white person. Then it would be mixing. Yeah. Yeah. I love Jonathan Majors. There was something in me that Mm. felt, I bet he has a white girlfriend. And when Antoinette revealed to me (laughs) that he was in Sweden somewhere with a blonde haired, blonde haired white woman, I don't celebrate that i'm not <laughs> like again let's reverse the the races and have someone talk about oh, her boy. and her and jonathan majors and let's have them just say the same exact thing that's what i love about this you know other people go oh there's a hypocrisy black people can say this here's my take on it i'm glad somebody gets to say it somebody should right right i'm glad that somebody gets to have that opinion do i agree with it no date whoever the fuck you want i don't care but 
I think people should be allowed to just say a thing. I don't think you're hurting anybody. I think it poof goes into the ether and it disappears mm -hmm. and it's gone forever. Okay, great. If people want to watch it, they can watch it. If not, they don't have to. But don't let it ruin your day. Like if she's like, oh, I don't think black men should be marrying white women. Oh, okay. What is there about that statement that hurts anybody? Literally nothing. Right. Most it's statements don't hurt. Okay, I will say actually like statements can't hurt you. Like the statement can't right. hurt you. I think Patrice O'Neill once said on Opie and Anthony, he said, is it wrong to say I endorse hate speech? He goes, why can't I hate you? He goes, I want to be allowed to hate you so I can talk to you and mm -hmm. you can talk back at me and we can be honest. I like this lady. She's just in front of a microphone going, I don't like that he has a white wife. I'm not, I don't celebrate mixed marriages. <laughs> I want to be that. Yeah. Not gonna celebrate their children that they have. <laughs> The, oh my god! Gonna, it doesn't make me be like yes like you know some people together you're like i love them together that's how we all got here a white woman and a black man help me through this i don't have a logical answer and what i get agitated about is because it's it's commercially trendy for people to be in interracial relationship oh my god it's, this could be an anthony kumia show episode this really could be like <laughs> How about that? Like your relationship is trendy though? Yeah. I don't like, like that. Yeah. It's like, I don't celebrate that shit. It's just trendy. It's become a presentation of diluted blackness. Like, why aren't you happy to see like all these mixed families and Cheerios commercials? No, because the storytelling <laughs> is not our, it's not a mixed story. The mm. storytelling is this is what's digestible for white people. I don't oh, mind seeing black women. I like it. I'm sorry. I like it when black people hate commercialized like trying to be politically correct white people. I love that. That's one of my favorite things. It's one of the reasons I don't dislike Charlemagne the God. That's actually something I never think about. I, I never... like it when like militant black people hate politically correct white people. Okay. Because like somebody has to, and I can't because then I look Why like not? a dick. Well, because then it's like, oh, because they're promoting racial tolerance. I'm like, no, talk to this black guy. He's like, y'all a bunch of whitewashing motherfuckers who are erasing our history. And I'm like, see what that guy said. I think like if you're the opposite of whatever thing, like if you're not the thing, like I think you get the right to hate it. You can hate yourself for God's sakes, right? Well, I think we're seeing some of that right My now. God. <laughs> With white men, it gets even more toxic. Oh, for you're me. toxic. What? I don't. What? Hold on. I gotta go back a little bit. Not our. Is it's not a mixed story. The mm. storytelling is this is what's digestible for white people. I don't mind seeing black women with white men. It gets even more toxic oh, for me. Oh, you're toxic. What? Physical. I don't. <laughs> so they're all with her until the end where she's like, yeah, but the other way <laughs> around, a black woman with a white man, I like me some white meat. And they're like, oh, you fucking bitch. <laughs> that is so wild. I'm going to have to like, what was that but called? That's, uh, it was it. Here's the thing podcast see the thing is see the thing is that's what it is yeah here's the thing is uh that was another guy i have podcast. to listen to more of that uh thank you to david chandler for the 100 dollars over on paypal Jesus. so we have uh we have knocked out tuesday evening's goal we are now on to wednesday morning thank you guys very much if you feel like contributing to our program there's the paypal there is the Streamlabs super chats count as well Again, thank you all for being so generous. April will thank keep you, track David. of uh, the Wednesday stuff. Uh, for starting the rest now? Of the, for the, yeah, for the rest of the night. All right, let's watch uh, a psychotic uh, event. We had a, a chair, or a chair, uh, a car, fall on top of a guy's dad. Uh, now uh, after the car fell on the guy's dad, no one is around to help. Obviously, you don't just have you know the jaws of life around the corner. So... His son is the only person there, and unbelievably, he tries to lift the car off of his own father. Let's uh, let's go to this story from uh, about a week ago. This is to wild. a KCRA three exclusive. An Oakdale family is calling their 15 year old son a hero after he rescued his father when the truck he was working under fell on top of him. The scary moments were all caught on camera. KCRA 3s Leanne Denyer. That is weird. You know, they talk about mm -hmm. that how that adrenaline. You know, you always hear that that kind of con yeah. common phrase that like, oh, you get so much adrenaline going, you can lift a car. It is just kind of a weird thing your body does. We're like, this person is either going to die or you're going to do this. 
And you like can just do things that you normally can't do because you just don't have another choice. It's it's the fight or flight syndrome with all the adrenaline. Yeah, suddenly you do all these heroic feats that you can never accomplish. You I yeah, either you can do that or you should get the fuck out of there and get help as soon as you can. Yes, like, fight or flight, pick yeah, one. If you're one, like don't just stand there and try to lift. Like if you go like this and there's nothing happening, get the fuck out and get some help. But if you're lifting, you're like fuck, I got it. First of all. I don't know how you just don't have a rock hard dick after that. Go, I have to go fuck something immediately. I think you're probably too fucking freaked out. I just even lifted, if you're the one who did that, you're freaked out. I just lifted a car off another man. Like, there's got to be something cavemanish that goes. Just grab. I, I want to grab something by the hair and fuck it. I think that happens later. I think right now you're like, holy shit, my dad almost died. Yeah. Dad, you good? Yeah. All right, I gotta go club a bitch and take her back to the cave. Like I'm feeling some primal shit right about now. Down with the son and father who tell her they have a lot to be thankful for. Matthew Wilkinson remembers thinking he had to get the work done on his truck that night. We were having problems getting the rotor off. But on what should have been a normal uh -oh. Monday night for the Wilkinson family, the security system on their Oakdale home captured this. <laughs> ah! Oh, fuck, fuck that. I couldn't get a good angle. So I slid my body underneath the truck. The second it popped off, the truck fell. The, I know it rolled forward because I saw it roll forward and it fell right on top of me. And oh. all I could think it was about was the breath coming out of me. I was just squished and I couldn't talk. I couldn't yell. The terrifying video shows the truck fall. Matthew was stuck. The accident left him with a punctured lung, broken ribs. His shoulder is separated. He looks pretty good for a guy who had all that shit happen to him, though. I will say, though, like any guy who works on vehicles, you got to have that thing up on fucking supports. What the fuck are you doing? That bothers me. Well, like there's like I've had to have this conversation with my brother before because he's this kind of, you know, special, special man. OK, it's yeah. a bit retarded. Like, it is. like you just won't put supports on your truck. You're just going to chance it falling on you and dying. Yeah. What if this guy's son hadn't been there? You're dead now. Right. I've always Do seen better. like intelligence as more a measure of a man than just retarded toughness, it, it, like unnecessary toughness. It does, in fact, need to be a factor. You need to be a little more intelligent. Like, look, this. if you're a guy who's unnecessarily tough and you run into a guy who's unreasonably intelligent and smart, you're going to get beat by that guy every time. Or at least like mediate some of the, the, the catastrophes that can happen. Yeah. Like, I can't believe this. All this time in the hospital, I'm trying to figure out how I got off my other truck, right? And I'm thinking about, thinking about, oh, I got a surveillance camera, right? So I called my kid and had him look at the surveillance camera and they realized that he lifted the truck enough for me to roll out. Yeah, and not like a oh. Ford Focus either. No, like a, that was a big, big ass work truck work he truck. lifted off of him. You can see it and it's just dropped right on him. And um, and I was scared. I mean, I heard him make like a like noise, like his soul was leaving his body, it was crazy. But like plenty Oof. of times before, 15-year-old Dolan had been helping his dad work on the truck that night. I was jumping around, asking what to do, what to do, what to do, and I didn't know what to do, and I just immediately just jumped to the back of the truck. I just ran over and, and just tried with, like, as hard as I could, just tried to get enough, get it up enough to get him out. It was enough. Wow. The oh. video shows Matthew freeing himself. My son what a hero. is my hero. He saved my life. Can I get a PS5? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, now's my, the time. Did my Christmas present budget go up? Yeah, did I get a new. I'm gonna turn 16 next year. How about a car? You know. Oh, there's a good one. You wanna buy me a hooker, Dad? I just feel like it's maybe time. I think I should deserve like many girlfriends. Yes. Now. Could we just start a harem, if possible? Whoa. And while there is a recovery ahead, the family says Dolan is their hero, but for the high school freshman. I was just worried I didn't help. That's all I was really worried about. But now I'm just. Now I'm just sending video of it to girls in my class, you know, even some senior girls hoping she'll fuck me in a barley field uh, is what I'm really hoping for. I then. defiled a child. Oh, <laughs> my God. That is a terrible thing to say. Why would something like that even be uttered out loud? I have no idea. Wow. I like a nice shorn puss. Yep. Yeah, I can understand that. God, those are vile. That's all, I'm really, that's all that's really going through my mind right now. In Oakdale, Leon Denier, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, I suppose you just got to get that thing up just enough so he can squirt out of there. Just barely. Um, one of the girls that was in my grade in high school, her dad was a farmer and he was working on a big grain truck. And another big mistake he made 
nobody was around him and he was under it. Like the dump truck part, like so the actual, the back part that flips up, it was up. The thing fucking came down on him and fucking killed him and his family had to find out. That's him. like everything. You know what I mean? There's so much weird like medieval farm shit. Don't do this shit alone. That can kill you. Like grain bins are one of the craziest things. If, if you don't live in a place that has grain bins, it's one of the most fucked up things I ever heard is when I started working in like a podunk shithole town mm -hmm. in Litchfield, they, would t they told me about grain bin deaths. And I'm like, oh, what's that? It's like, oh yeah, you literally just caught, get caught between sifting grain, and yep. it's like quicksand, it's quicksand, and it just fills all of your orifices and strangles you to death. There's that one. There's manure pits that are really bad. Like you get basically the same effect, like the quicksand effect, and you you drown suffocate. in shit. You drown in shit. Yeah. Um, augers. People get like a loose piece of clothing sucked yep. into it, and then fucking get aren't ripped there, to shreds. Aren't there people who, like, burn to death or, like, explode in manure pits sometimes because of, like, the methane? Uh, I've heard, like, there's been methane explosions, in, like, involving manure. Look, you can look it up. I've heard I of it. I can't confirm. But. I've heard of it. Uh, thank you to Orange Boy with uh, 20 bucks. He says, keep it going, you know, thank you. for Aaron's Casey's Pizza. April, Aww. you keep track of all that, and then we can uh, knock good. it off of... Uh, Wednesday morning. They're saying, yeah, that 15 year old is like Connor McGregor on steroids. Uh, yeah, he doesn't look like much, but. No, but good for him. You get, like I said, you get that uh, adrenaline going. Uh, Robert says the Vikings need to fire Donatelli immediately. I don't think so. I think when you're 10 and 3, you can't be fucking around and starting out with a new defensive coordinator. You just kind of got to, you got to limp through it, I think, at that point. Uh, Triple N says if you smoke. Uh, oh shit! I just fucked that up. If you sm if you light a smoke in a shit pit, you deserve to go. Yeah, I've heard of that. Okay, I'm telling you, there's sense. so much methane that you light something, and you get an explosion and you die. Oh, corn dust too. Cigarettes in general should not be around most farm shit, right? I've yeah, I've heard Come of people. On. I've heard of people blowing up in uh, corn dust explosions. Yep, too. there's that. There's you know you can burn down your whole fucking barn because you just dropped a cigarette in your hay or something. Who remembers that wrestler? <laughs> Corn dust. I'm sorry. I believe it was gold dust. You know, you can put a, like, you can fucking burn your barn down too if you put away, like, uh, hay or straw bales that aren't dried out yet and they're sitting in there drying, like, on their own and they're going to start a fire eventually. Why? Drying on their own? Like, if you put wet hay bales away, like, stacked in the hayloft and shit like that, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to make sure that shit is dry before you put it away. Because. I feel like the dry one would start on fire easier. I don't know. My my dairy farmer neighbors taught me that. I don't know where their logic came from, but I knew that I never put away wet bales after that one. Okay. Uh, Deranged Lunatic, a.k.a. DL, says, we've had several grain bins explosions in Missouri from dust particles. Yeah, shit happens. Uh, Reeling Minnesota says, grew up with grain elevator next door in a town of 200. Yeah, and you'd probably lose like three a year. <laughs> to the fucking the grain bins. Uh, can we watch a, a grain bin explosion? Yeah. Uh, grain bin explosion. Grain bin and dust explosion. Oh. Call First. from informal warfare. Informal warfare. What's up, buddy? Hey guys, dumbest call in ever. But I just thought I'd call and explain the hay bale thing because why not? Sure. Okay. Sure. So when you put away wet bales the 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 weight from them being wet actually causes more pressure and pressure causes heat and so at the very core if all the hay is wet and it's stacked up real high then that pressure becomes enough heat to ignite the hay bales and they can just go up on their own well, there you go Thank or you. shit does the same thing see april you knew it was you knew it was a problem you just didn't realize that was what the problem yeah i didn't was. know why all right well thank, thank you. you buddy yeah all right bye all right bye <laughs> now we're gonna go watch some shit blow up if you don't mind uh, this is a grain bin collapse and dust explosion. Oh, my God. This could this be a fun bad. little rabbit hole to go down. This looks like Cargill but, uh, in Litchfield. That does look like Cargill. So we're going to load up the truck. Okay, bro, let's get to business. Uh-oh. Is that thing supposed to be moving like that? No. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> this is giving me anxiety. So what's happening right here? The fucking thing's collapsing. Uh oh. Oh no. That truck better get the fuck out of there. 
There better not be a human in there. Those sounds don't sound good. April, what's going on? It's buckling the frame of the superstructure. Yeah. Knocking the can off the there? superstructure. Okay, why is this doing that, though? Is there too much grain in there? I don't know if the, just the structure was weak in general. Like, that usually... I've never seen that happen. I've actually spent time at Cargill before, and I've never inside, seen something like this. Inside job? No. Uh-oh. No. There'd be no reason. Bush? What? Bush? Bush did it. There's all kinds of shit. Back up some more. It's getting right, Paul. Yeah. We are working with combustible... Get back some more! Oh. Get back some more, but keep filming the motherfucker. We want to capture this shit on tape. Don't get too far away now. Can you imagine, like, if that was, like, let's say it's corn, it probably is. and it A big it, lump with knobs? It, it, it explodes and you got fucking kernels just pelting you. Popcorn, just right in your face. You think it turns to popcorn? Yeah, just nice little popcorn kernels, you know, just... And then it's Did blow. they salt it first? Yes, right there. No, you gotta you gotta eat plain popcorn, which I get it. That's that kind of game. Yeah, that sucks. Nobody wants to eat that. Yep, Rut roll. Oh, it's yep. spilling. You can see it spilling right there. Oh my god, I hate. Uh oh, I hate oh, it's this. buckling. It's buckling. I hate it. Timber. Oh, it's coming out from goes. everywhere. It's yeah. like watching oh, the Titanic no. sink in a farm community. This is so much yeah. money. Uh oh, there ah. it goes. Oh. And like you light a match around that. Oh, there it goes. Oh, ah, yeah. shit. There go your eyebrows, brother. Fuck. Ooh. Can you imagine if that thing didn't, like, if the fire didn't go out and the whole fucking thing explodes, the whole but elevator? You know what's amazing? Like, look at after the fireball. No corn dust, no nothing. Like that shit just burns all up in a second like and then gone. Flash in the pan. It's just a, a, a fireball and then go, fireball. Oh, yeah. It just all comes out. There it goes. <sighs> and then whoosh. Oh. Yeah. And then look, no more corn. All smoke. That shit burns up in an instant. It's like pine... It's worse than pine needles. Ooh, daddy. All that right. awful. Let's go to the phones. Call from... Fall in the Great. All right. Let's talk yes. to K. Fall in the Great. What's up, buddy? All right. You ready for a little redneck science as to why that happened? Uh, yes. I was oh. going to guess, but I'll just, I'll just go along for the ride okay, here. Okay. What... What happened is inside of that grain bin, the top layer was basically solid. And as the corn is pouring out of the bottom, it created a vacuum inside of that like grain bin, uh -huh. basically causing it to crush itself. So that's why it started to collapse on like on top of itself. So the top, so the top vacuum. layer was solid. So it was just literally crushing the soft stuff down below. Yeah. Ooh. And That's that just fun. caused it to buckle. That's and what? Just it. like the friction of all the of all the stuff pouring out caused the explosion? Basically. Okay. In, yeah, impact of all those little particles. Yeah. All right. Well thank there you, you buddy. Go. Later. Appreciate it. All right, there we go. Now we know uh, why that happened. God, all I'm seeing is like all the money fucking lost there, all oh, the yeah. time put into that. Well what's now you've got to fix that elevator. Check it too. out. I'm gonna try and bring back my uh Try and bring back, bring, 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 uh, bring back my farm time knowledge. I used to have to call on the farm markets when I did uh, AM radio. I used to do corn drives. Uh, for I'm going to say corn is what, like four fifty a bushel these days? No idea. Wow. Uh, corn. I would never make a guess right now. Corn per bushel. It was like four something when I was uh, when I was that when I was in Litchfield. What is it now? Six. Okay, six thirty five a bushel is corn at the moment. Uh, so. Now all of a sudden, a, lot a bunch of, of people, calls. a lot of people calling in. We got to talk about corn. So six thirty a bushel. You figure out how many bushels were in that grain bin. You lost yourself a nice little. That's chunk not all of you're using, though. No. Raz, it Chaz. All right, Raz, what's up? Well, I'm not an expert on any of this new farm equipment stuff, but I know stuff about the older stuff. 
Okay. Some might call it antique farm equipment. Oh, you know, no, no. God, back why? in the day. No, God, why? No, why? <laughs> they used to... <laughs> What? What, what? We're talking about farming, aren't we? We are. What's your point about farming? But, the, the old time so, farm so, equipment. Well, well, back back in the day, the old farm equipment. Yeah. They take the big black. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta cut it. I'm gonna. Yeah. See, you you're supposed to hang up yourself. You don't wait for me to hang up on you. Uh, wow. You see, they used to take the big black and breed them with their big woman, and then. Could you imagine just saying that out loud? You know how fucked no. up. You know how fucked up Jimmy had to be at the luncheon to say that. It's like, pretty bad. Out loud, feel okay. Well, don't stick a camera in his face when he's drunk. That's the worst part. Is I feel so bad for Jimmy the Greek because it, it's like it's entrapment. Yeah, exactly. You, uh, you goaded him into this, right? A reporter from WRC TV was asking questions about Martin Luther King's birthday. and the Don't ask a guy named Jimmy the Greek about Martin Luther King's birthday. We won't find ourselves in this situation. We can skip this, yeah. yeah. Progress blacks have made in society. Their CBS sports commentator, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, gave his impressions of blacks and coaching. And he went, oh, Lordy, I is going to dance for my boss. I'm sorry, he was giving his impressions of... Uh... It might have been the good old days. It might have been less offensive if he would have done like a blackface soft shoe. I do think so. Yeah. In the National Football League, his answers could raise as much controversy as the statements by former Dodgers executive Al Campanis last April on ABC's Nightline news program. Yeah, pretty soon they're going to have to equalize it for the blacks, for the Greeks, the Jews, and for everybody. I mean, let's make Omaha. it equal for everybody. You know. And uh, is it equal? What about in sports? Well, they've got everything. If, if they take over coaching like everybody wants them to, there's not going to be anything left for the white people. I mean, all the players are black. I mean, the only thing that the whites control is the coaching jobs. Now, I'm not being derogatory about it. <laughs> oh, you're not? I'm not being derogatory. Uh, Jimmy Greek, uh, after three more shots, he actually stood up and started chanting, you will not replace us. <laughs> he actually tried to buy a black person. Uh, after this, he was uh, adopt adopted by Tucker Carlson. Uh, it was very sweet. About it, but that's all that's left for yeah. him. <laughs> so black talent is beautiful. It's great. It's out there. Yeah. It's, you know, the it's the only thing there. left for the whites is a, a couple coaching jobs. Yeah, maybe we need to get more black coaches. <laughs> oh, she'll ride with me. Okay, well, I'm sure that they'll take over that pretty soon, too. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Jimmy. Call from Marquise Harris. Oh, what's oh. up, Marquise? <laughs> you know, that's what those rednecks get first trying to automize everything they wouldn't have this problem you know if they had some oh my oh, goodness that's no. a great hang up perfect oh. i want to see if we can get the big black for a comment and criticism i think his remarks fall into two categories uh, that's why blacks excel over whites in sports oh boy the black is a better athlete to begin with because he's been bred to be that way because of his high thighs and big thighs that goes up into his back <laughs> You tell him, Jimmy. <laughs> He's like Leo in uh, Django with the brain and going, you see the contours in the skull here. Oh, yeah. God who went on saying there's not much room left for, quote, the white guys in sports except for a couple of coaching jobs. His dismissal... Oh, but we don't have the big black and they breed them with the big woman. They oh, here we go. It. Here we go. Let's go. We didn't go back. Lunchtime interview about the significance of Martin Luther King's birthday. He said that blacks were bred to be superior athletes. The, owner, the slave owner would 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 breed his big black to his big woman, so that he could have a a big a big, a big black kid. See? And Snyder said that's why blacks excel over whites in sports. The black is a better athlete to begin with because he's been bred to be that way because of his high thighs and big thighs that goes up into his back. <laughs> To which, to which Saquon Barkley said, hey, you... Uh, oh. Go oh, wait. That's... God damn it. Well... Mr. Thunder Thighs over there. Touche there, Mr. The Greek. You got can me you, on that one. Can you imagine being that reporter? Are you just standing... Are you standing there like this while holding the camera? Like... No, you're looking at the camera just, guy and you're going... Oh, this is good. Keep it cool. This is good, Jimmy. He's fucking hammered. 
Yeah, Jimmy, the high thigh bones. What? What? Where does it go from there? What's it? Any other like bodily differences? Yeah. It's, uh, well, you see, the flat back of their head means that their brains don't develop into. Si- oh boy. Oh my God. And that's the way you control impulse and emotion and hey. rage. And that, Jimmy, not okay. Uh, Cerberus with five bucks says wood dust explosion was my worst nightmare when I worked at Woodcraft in Forreston. Thank you, Cerberus. Thank you for the five bucks. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, we're already into Wednesday morning's goal, as it were. All right, we can jump around here. Uh, oh, I love this story. Uh, a 59-year-old man who was found dead in New York turned out to be a missing family man from Connecticut who had disappeared oh. nearly a decade ago and was living under a fake name. Oh, so that was a runaway. But they thought he was dead. Sure. And then when they found him, they turned out he he, he hadn't been dead this whole time. He just didn't want to be with that family. <laughs> But he's dead now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're the family, you really wrote him off, right? Right. So it's like. So it's not, you know, it's fine. At least you, you got his body, you know? Hold on. Do you even tell the family then? If they already assumed he's dead, like, you're going to hurt him. I think the ethics, you have to tell him. Yeah, I get that, but you're you're also ripping open the wound again. Yeah, well, you know. I don't know. Things are necessary. <laughs> uh, the man went by Richard King and lived in Rock Hill, New York, where officers from the Sullivan County Sheriff's Department were investigating his untimely death earlier this month. Uh, New York police initially could not identify the male, but found papers showing the name Robert Hoagland, who was a Connecticut man who went missing on July 28th, 2013. Oh, boy. So they assumed that this guy was just dead, that he was gone. And they go, oh, no, it turns out he's been living in uh, New York. Oh, what's he doing now? Well, now he's dead. <laughs> now he- yeah. That's kind of the good news, bad news. Wow. Like, hey, good news. You know, you thought your dad was missing? Yeah. No, we found him. Where is he? Well, he fucking died yesterday, uh, unfortunately, but he right, was like, alive. Oh, I thought he was dead. No, but he is now. No, he's not. He, he, no, he wasn't dead then. Oh, great. Well, what's he doing now? Oh, no, no. Now, now he died. But, you know, you had a chance the last 10 years. I'm having like a, like a TV show flashback. Like, oh, good news. My girlfriend wasn't cheating on me. Now she is. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you know when I uh, was paranoid that my girlfriend was cheating on me? Yeah, yeah. Turns out she wasn't. Oh, what's she doing now? Oh, I caught her fucking some guy. Uh, yeah, I brought it up and now she is. Yeah, it's uh, don't make the accusation unless you got the proof. Uh, Hoagland's- <laughs> In the words of Aaron, you're going to will it into existence. Right, you're going to will that into <laughs> existence. Uh, Hoagland's 2013 disappearance prompted an investigation that received nationwide attention, including a true crime special. From the Discovery series entitled Disappeared a Family Man. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. If you're him and you were alive that whole time, are you laughing while you watch that? Right. You knew the TV show got made about you. You know you've been talked about on all these programs. That's fucking funny. You're on like Unsolved Mysteries. Like, we still have no fucking idea where this guy is. He's just sipping his like fucking big gulp right. from fucking Super America. It'd be funny if they were doing one of those uh, <laughs> stories like he disappeared right by this gas station. He just walks behind with a soda going like that. And, right. oh, guys, I'm uh, uh, right here. Guys, I just changed my name. I hated my wife. That's all it was. <laughs> I just had to get the fuck out of there. I didn't know I was going to cause such a hullabaloo. Fucking kids never behave. My bad. Uh, she had failed to show up uh, to work or he had failed to show up to work or pick up a family member at the airport <laughs> on that Monday in 2013. Oh, no. Officers found the family cars, Robert's wallet, medication, and cell phone at the family home. So he just up and fucked off everything. You kind of have to. You can't bring your cell phone. People will track you. The press release said, uh, noting that he was last seen at a gas station on July 28th, 2013. The investigation remained open and sightings were received and investigated nationwide. Hoagland had uh, had apparently vanished relocated to upstate New York around November 2013 and adopted the name Richard King. Uh, It's pretty confusing. We're trying to handle... I'm sorry, it's pretty confusing. We're trying to handle it right now, to be honest. Haven't really figured out any details, said Christopher Hoagland, the late Hoagland's son. Oh, no. You have to assume that daddy just fucking hated you. He didn't like you guys. Like, there's no other answer for that, I don't think. Yeah, he didn't want to be around. You guys that go, is just that. You guys can all go get fucked. <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck you guys. I'd rather uh, be dead than, you know, be around. Newtown authorities said there were no signs of foul play in Hoagland's death, and his remains have uh, were taken for autopsy by the Sullivan County coroner, according to 
the press release. So he didn't even get to die a sexy death or anything. He just kind of died. Kind of died. He's 59. That's not. Ran away from it. Well, he didn't have his medication. Maybe he had some medical care in the last year of some sort. (laughs) Yeah, he just uh, went off. Now we got, you know, you know, runaway dads dying and shit. Guys are making some very, you guys are making some jokes that's going to get some guys, poor guy's going to blow his head off (laughs) reading some of your guys' jokes there. Jesus Christ. I mean, at what point do you watch a guy and go, he's he's beaten, it's over. I think we've I th- we can call the fight at this point. You guys are ruthless, man. Uh, oh, man, I don't really feel like doing this one. Uh, Why did you put this in here then? I don't know. Oh, that's nasty. There might have been something else about that story that I wanted to get into, but Maybe. I really don't feel like doing it now. You don't want to do dead baby jokes? Or I, don't, I don't want to do a, a drowning what baby What are all story. the reasons one would drown a baby? I mean, we is don't, that why you put that in there? We have a whiteboard. Uh, we could let's get a flow chart. Going. Well, yeah, we could come up with some ideas. Oh, uh, have we talked about this one yet? A 29 year old Islamorada man in Miami uh, is accused of tossing two kittens from a mu- moving vehicle, a meowing vehicle, oh, no. uh, on U.S. Highway One. I like this guy. Don't throw the no. You like kittens? You, they're overpopulated, though. You got to give them that. You got to throw it from a car. We got to see if they land on their feet. It's an experiment. I will say, though, cats always land on their feet. Right. Except when you throw I them from a speeding mine vehicle. I used to home and they always landed on their feet. Oh, what's that now? Just kidding. What'd you used that to do? That was satire. What'd you do? I loved and cherished my Well, kittens. continue satiring. What did you do? I would climb. <laughs> Go ahead. You, you got to find, like, the highest location on your farm. Like, let's say, like, the top of the haystack and the hayloft. And you got to bring your little kitties up there and go, whoop. See if they land on their feet. And how did that go? They always landed in a soft pile of hay. They're fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alex Bernal says, I'm willing April into an affair. That is oh, whoa. a terrible, terrible thing to do to Alex somebody. Alex with two X's. Yeah, that's not okay, buddy. Uh, Diego <laughs> Torres Ruiz, who was arrested in Tavernier, has been charged with two counts of animal cruelty. I, By the way, if this was a dog, they would have found him, found a way to charge him with 12. Yeah, I agree. Cats don't really get the day in court they deserve. They don't have value. That's why. Because they're everywhere. They like, have nine times the value of a dog. They have nine lives. Do you know how few you people shut give your a, mouth. Do you know how few people give a fuck about cats compared you to dogs? You fucking call your boyfriend and ask him how he values his kitty. Look, you never see like feral dogs running around. They're always somebody's dog. But you'll see feral cats because people untrue. are like no when's I've, the last time you just saw a yorkie running around with not no, yorkies but mixed breeds no i meant dogs <laughs> oh see i was gonna say when i grew up in I Litchfield. Mean, I'm, not, I'm not talking about kensington no i was gonna say when i grew up in litchfield sometimes driving around a certain back road there'd be a couple mixed breeds running around and what'd you guys do with those mixed breeds i stayed as far away as i could yeah, well, lest they bite me Uh, I take these incidents very seriously, and I'm happy to report an arrest was made in this case, said Monroe County Sheriff Rick Ramsey. Uh, On November 28th, a motorist reported seeing two kittens tumble from a (laughs) north... You can't do this! Seeing two kittens tumble from a northbound Hyundai Santa Fe near mile marker 87, causing vehicles to swerve to avoid hitting them. Why? It's just a little bump. Your car will be fine. It'll take it standing. There won't even be a dent. You ass wipe because there was one time, remember, we we're almost to my parents' house. This was two years ago, and a fucking squirrel ran in front of my car, and you were so pissed that I hit that thing. You felt I don't so want bad. people to hit an animal on purpose, but if a guy's just tossing them out like barrels in a fucking Donkey Kong game, then look, sacrifices need to be made so that your commute can be safe. You don't want to put you her in the ditch. The, don't hit the kitty. What are your options? Look, you're if, on a highway, busy traffic. You're going to hit somebody. If there's nowhere to go, I do not and will not ever recommend swerving, okay? All right. That's going you're going to hurt somebody or yourself. Yeah, or what if you'll just wreck if your, what, what if you'll just room, mess up your tires a little bit, you know? What are you going to do? Wear the tread down? Yeah, you don't want to be hitting your brakes too hard, you oh, know? Oh god. Tires wear unevenly if you're skidding and shit. That's I, no good. I want you to look up like big weepy-eyed kittens. I want you to look at a picture of them while you say that. Okay, hold on. Don't test my gangster. I want the ASPCA commercial playing. Weepy-eyed kitten. You're gonna get Images. like green and goopy. All right. Aww. Let's. Uh, which one? Which that one with the sad ears. This one right here. Yep. All right. 
if this thing's barreling towards you out of a Hyundai Santa Fe and you're barreling towards it and there's a car to the left of you and a car to the right, aim for its fucking head so it doesn't feel anything. Crush it like a grape. He already looks depressed. <laughs> oh, look at that face. You can't do that. And I'm only saying if you have room to just get out of the way and you're not going to harm somebody, I don't see the harm in moving for it. I mean, you're going to hold up traffic something fierce. No. And people have places to go. What if you're all alone in that lane? Like, I mean, look, you're not going to move for the what if it gets kitten? a claw right in the right place and it pops your tire? I oh, mean, nobody get fucked. And nobody that tiny needs little that. claw yeah. like kittens got like like claws this long. They're not like adult claws. Right. But there's so many of them like the, you won't even know that they're gone. They'll meld with Look, the street somebody, eventually. Some... You don't even need to pick them up. They'll just eventually turn into the pavement. Aaron... You know like when you spit gum out on a sidewalk and it just kind of becomes a black spot over time? That's all it'll be. Do you want this to be your black spot on the face of society? What, cats? Yeah, killing them. Are, feel... are you going to be... If there was a job opening for cat runner over her, let's are you say, taking it? Let's say Negan came by. Oh, my and God. And he had his barbed wire I... bat. Nope. And he cracked the skulls of like eight cats i'd feel nothing i'd i wouldn't feel a if thing. there ever comes a day where like torture is necessary for you for some stupid reason yeah that's gonna be the one that i i ask for what like i'm gonna have you strapped to a chair like daniel craig and casino royale but you're gonna keep your clothes on okay you're gonna be strapped there and you're gonna have to watch negan come in with his baseball bat and fucking off kittens and I'm going to see how long it takes you to, like, fucking freak out. I'd be so mad if some of the blood got on my clothes, though. <laughs> fucking heartless I, piece of shit. That would make me really, really Look, mad if I, that happened. I understand if they grew up to be an hey, asshole adult hey, cat, but... I hope you got your shitting pants on. Because you're going to be shitting your fucking pants real fucking no. soon. Why kittens, though? They haven't had the chance to be assholes yet. You turn around... You see a cat like standing on a like uh, perched on top of a grandfather clock, and you go, "Whoa, you are creepy as shit, sneaking up on me like that." Do you want to get a cat and just see how much you love it after two days? Oh, the hair, the fucking. I'll get smell. you a hairless one. <laughs> hairless cats. Weird. <laughs> That's next Sphinx week. Sphinx cats are really off-putting. <laughs> like, have you ever looked at one? <laughs> Sphinx, oh yeah, they're disgusting. The Sphinx cats, like when they're a mother, like the mother cat, you know how their titties all get swollen and saggy and shit? Have you ever seen a picture of a mother Sphinx cat with her fucking bags out? No, That she's... shit is really... I'd like to throw it out the like, door of a Hyundai. It's like a naked mole rat, but bigger. Ugh. Spaghetti Tooth John says, can we go back to dead babies? No, dead babies are sad. See? Dead cats are just part okay, of the process. Okay, let's do a process. poll. What's sadder, killing kittens or a dead baby? Like you didn't kill the baby, but you did kill the kitten. No, if if like my if, if a if a baby somewhere lives because I killed a kitten with my bare hands, do I hope your kid lives long and has a great career? Are you saying you would strangle a kitten to save a baby? Yeah, that would be such a shitty mean thing to do to somebody. Like you're in like the fucking They're saw. Kittens. You're in the fucking saw movie, and they fucking put you in a room. They're like, okay, I've got this baby's head in a guillotine. No. And you either fucking choke that cat right now. There's or a I'm baby fucking... in a crib, and they've got it grabbed around its two ankles, and there's a rock right outside the crib. Ooh. And they're like, you either snap that kitten's neck or I Come fucking on. Caligula this baby. <laughs> this makes me so sad. Uh, you, you started this. You're the one who asked me the question. Stop killing kittens. You know what you, you can do? You gave me a choice. Okay, I grew up on a hobby farm, right? How did that current kitten get out there? What do you remember being told the reason that that kitten was there? People, like, drop them off at People farms. People drop them off at farms. Yeah. Do you know what's better than throwing a kitten out of a window on a highway? What? Getting out and dropping the kitten off at a farm and hoping somebody takes care of it. That's like what they used to do with, like, retarded kids, too. Okay, but did they live? Or is that just a joke in a movie? <laughs> I think that might just be a joke in a movie. You take it up to a farm. Oh, no, that's in The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, we took it up to a farm, and we said, hey, you're free. <laughs> you can play with us. Do you want to watch that tonight? Kind of. I could go for Wolf of Wall Street. I'm going to be out so fucking fast. That ending is a little rough to watch, though. Yes. Like, with it, when he takes the kids, and they're in the car, and he's on coke, and... 
<clears throat> what? That's not your idea of a good time? No, that's not fun. Uh, a Mineola, Florida man was arrested after witnesses said he punched a dog before <laughs> threatening others living at his home. Where is PETA on all Look, this shit? that's how you know that the guy means business. Like, if a guy threatens you and he's just drunk, you're like, oh, that's what he does. But if you go... Boom! And you knock out a collie, and then you go, I'll fuck you guys up. They're like, I don't think he's bluffing. You know? Can we stop hurting animals? Well, look, they, these guys are doing it, not me. I can't control like, these white devils. Throwing kittens out of fucking car windows. That's They're pretty creative, though. Punching dogs. That is creative. Like, you are, you hit somebody in the road, and then they spin out like a turtle shell in Mario Kart, you know? Nobody wants a kitten death on their record. Right, exactly. <laughs> Every time you hit a car, you hear... Doo -doo 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 so obviously, like if you're going to punch a dog, the most satisfying one is a pit bull, right? Yeah, but they're going to take that stand. Yeah. They got they, big necks. That's a good chin. That is the problem. They got them fucking jowls, too. Yeah. Like You might fucking go in for that punch, and they're fucking latching on. Right, they might catch your fist. So what's like... Like the African in Ace Ventura 2. Yeah. Or does Ace Ventura catch his punch? No, Tommy no. Davidson catches his punch yeah. with his teeth. Um, I don't know. So what's an attainable nasty dog to punch? Golden Ret Oh, nasty? Oh, boxer? German Shepherd? I feel like a German Shepherd will fuck you up. I don't know. Rottweiler would fuck you up. Rottweilers are fucking freaky. Pitbull I don't like would them. fuck you up. Maybe a boxer. A Doberman? But they're fucking sleek, too. I don't know. Dogs are scary, kind of. Yeah. Think about that. Like ours is Dogs completely... don't look like, because they don't have the skulls and the heads that we do, so you can't punch them in a place that knocks them out. No, but this dog, like the dog you picked out from the shelter, he's got a fucking unfused spot in his skull where if yeah. he gets fucking poked in it, he can die. They do that with those dogs. They just, God <laughs> doesn't fuse their if, skull. Doesn't care enough. No. If you punched Gordy in the head, he's dead. God just went, yeah, here we go. Oh shit, I don't have enough. He's the most bulbous dog. Uh, fuck it. Cover your head, kid. There you go. Off you are. Hey. Like his head kind of just looks like like when you're in the home and garden store and like you buy fucking bulbs to plant for spring, like a glad bulb or he's something. Got a, he's got a wiffle he's, ball head. He's got a fucking bulbous yeah. dog in. Uh, Deputy said they received a call on November 19th about Gregory Berg, 45, who had come home drunk, hit the dog, and threatened to shoot other members of the household if they called law enforcement. Uh, witnesses in the home told deputies that Berg had gotten into an argument with someone in the house, and after the dog began to bark, Berg hit, kicked, and threw the dog in response. <laughs> deputies said witnesses also what? told them Berg went upstairs, began throwing objects down at everyone in the home, and swung a vacuum at them. I think you just get the hell out of Dodge for a minute, right? Nobody even had time to go, like, something happened at work today, bro? Like, you okay, or Do you what? need a hug? yeah. Hey, you want to talk about it? Do you, do you want to go get a drink, maybe? Yeah. Just relax. I don't think a drink is a good idea for well, this Well, you yeah. know. You, you, want some, uh, you want some heroin? <laughs> yeah, would you like some opioids? Here? Yes, would you Calm like... Calm down. Like some, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe some opioids would help you. Uh, Berg then threatened to shoot anyone who came into his room. Well, I mean, in fairness, you did kind of come in tearing the place up. No, think about this. If that guy's in a fucking room, don't go in that room. Yeah, let's... Like, why does he need to threaten you? Just, how about you stay away? Let's leave him be for a little bit. Uh, upon arrival, deputies met with the family and went to Berg's room on the second floor to make contact with him. The affidavit says that when deputies tried to arrest Berg, he refused, uh, refused to leave the home, and deputies searched him for weapons. According to deputies, they were able to find a pocket knife on Berg, who went to reach for the knife before being stopped and handcuffed by deputies. Deputies later found Alprazolam. That's Xanax. Well, Black Betty, El Alprazolam. Why are they calling it Alprazolam? Because it's that's the name of the drug. Well, it's that. I'm sorry that you're so brand loyal. That kind of sounds like you're fucking brainwashed by uh, pharmaceutical I don't commercials. Have that they should be like. I feel like he's if he's got Alprazolam on him, that means he didn't take it. Because I promise you that if he did, he wouldn't be doing this shit. Uh, Berg did not have a prescription for it. That's oh. shocking. You're right. <laughs> uh, Berg faces charges of resisting without violence, cruelty to animals, possession of certain drugs without prescriptions, and three counts of domestic assault. A no victim contact order has been placed against him. Court records show. Yeah, that's not very uh, rare there in Florida, from what I hear. Those uh, needing to be protected from 
people. If he would have just taken one of those Xanax pills, he could have taken a nap instead of punching a it's, fucking collie. Instead of KOing a dog and swinging a vacuum at people. Fucking, hey, while you're swinging that at us, you mind, uh, you know, clean tidying up a little bit? Fucking dog will never trust again. Give the floor a once over, you know, if you're going to threaten us with it. Uh, they're saying Alprazolam is a benzo. Right. Is that what Xanax is? I believe so, yeah. Oh, fuck. I don't take drugs. That should be a down. Yeah, that should be a downer. Like, that's going to... I'm not bring a, you down quite a bit. I'm not a drug guy. So. so yeah, what the fuck? If that guy had just taken the fucking drugs he had, Wait. like a good addict. Look, he like, thought he thought he had things under control. What okay? the fuck? He clearly needed it. He uh, why somebody wouldn't prescribe him the Xanax? I don't know. <laughs> Beltrain says, punch an Italian greyhound. They just spontaneously vaporize. Oh shit! I have a question. Yeah. Have you ever been around an Italian greyhound? The miniature kind or the full size ones? I'll go miniature. No. They're fucking weird. So where I grew up, I was very close to Hutchinson and they had a pet store on Main Street where they just kind of let two of them roam around the whole pet store by themselves at all times. And they're so fucking slinky and Oh, those are cool looking dogs, man. Really? Are you kidding? Look at that one. He's cowering like Gordy. I fucking love one of those. They're so creepy though. Oh, those are cool dogs, They just kind of glide around and they're weird. Those look fun. I would get one of these. Look at that. That is a goofy shaped dog. Big old they're, tits. They're very weird. Just Did you say big old tits? Big old tit area right here. Big old chest. Tiny little gut. Can you imagine if they left his oh, satchel Oh, look on at him? his floppy ear. Oh, God. I like them. They're very strange. You know how fucking fast these they're, probably are? Look at the way they're built in the hips and they're, everything. They're very fast. Oh, my God. They're, you know, because they got the big thigh bone that goes up into their butt. <laughs> you know, back in the Italian greyhound breeding days, they used to take the big a greyhound and they used to breed it with the big woman. Uh, and yeah. then they would get a big black greyhound. What? Yes, a BBG. So you want one now? Oh, oh look at that piece of shit. <gasps> look at that fucking guy. I almost said the F word. <laughs> how, much, how much fun does that look like? Oh, my God. Oh, look at that little whore. And the nice dog's dog cute, too. too. <laughs> Oh, I'll look at him. He just got chastised. See, him and Gordy would kind of like go along just fine because they're both weird. Right. Look, look at, at that. that. They both hold their ears the same way. Yeah, I want one of these. We're going to add to God. our collection soon. And we're <laughs> a little freak. freak dog. Oh, I want one. How about a, so which one's cuter, that or a miniature Italian ga uh, greyhound? greyhound? <laughs> I prefer the Italian greyhound. Yes. I like the miniature ones better. Uh, <laughs> look at that little fucking homo. Are you are we talking to ourselves now? Uh, it's great. They are weird though. You they're can't cool you gotta admit dogs, they're like man. they're alien esque. Yeah, but they're and like what I'm trying to say though is like their personality is so strange. You know how Gordy like slinks around and cowers occasionally when he's being weird? Yeah. Okay, now picture that but amplified all the time. Like they never fucking chill the fuck out. They're just creepy. Italian greyhound. Funny. Let's go with a funny Italian greyhound. Here we go. Hi. Enjoy. Ha, <laughs> ah, look at the little Tardo. Let's go. Got three looks. Oh, we gotta watch the music. Okay. <laughs> look at that. Look at him go in shit. Bed. Look at him. Uh oh. oh that's Gordy. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with this dog. It looks like a fucking... That's that, how they make uh, him the dress elf. in Muslim countries. It looks like the elf from The Hobbit. Look at him. Fuck you. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> Look at oh, this no. He ran into the door. I want one of these. So That's Gordy, too. Get his breakfast. He needs food. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool dog. Are we getting one now? Yeah, I kind of want one of these. Wow. <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Are you willing to put sweaters on your Italian greyhound? I mean, I don't know. Look at that. It looks like an <laughs> alien that's sending you a message. I'm telling you, they're very weird. Ah! Fucking black lifeless eyes. eyes. Lifeless <laughs> eyes, like a doll's eyes. It doesn't seem to be living till he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white. Look at them. They're fucking weird. Look at that. I would love to have a dog like this. Just losing his shit. Chill the fuck out, dude. Oh, Derpus. Oh, and then this one's just like... 
<laughs> oh, he's doing the Gordy thing again. The spastic yeah. like swat. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, that's enough for that gay shit. Aaron got excited. I'd get one. God. I'd get one of those dogs. Jack Russell's two people saying Jack Russell's. I like those big personality dogs. You know? I grew up with Labradors. <laughs> yeah, they're boring. They like to play fetch, though. You should I, see Gunner. They got He's very a fucking elephant. They got very small gas tanks, though. They run hot for a little That's while. That's not true. I don't know. Those My labs. dad fucking has a huge ass frisbee he throws for Gunner, who's a fucking stud of a huge red lab. And he fucking threw the thing for him like 30 times, like a long distance. He's not done yet. Okay. I think his record actually was 22. I correct myself. 22. Uh, Oakwood officer resigns after video shows him slamming woman to the ground. This is in Atlanta, Georgia. I will say this. I would hate to be a cop in Atlanta. Dude, it, everything in Atlanta kind of seems nasty. It just I don't seems, know, it like, all just seems so aggressive. And, have you been to the airport? Like that place is fucking a mess and it's, I've been there. It's so fucking messy and violent and people. I want to see a shitty airport. I don't think I've seen a I've, shitty airport. Yet. That was a shitty airport. Like Minneapolis is one of the nicest airports. I like ours. Las Vegas has a nice airport. Las Vegas is fun. They have good breakfast options. I'm gonna tell you right now. now I don't go on vacation. MSP Terminal One, nicer than McCarran Airport. We is going on vacation. In yeah, we're going this year. Next year. Oh, you're not gonna <laughs> count three nights in lovely Rochester, New York? In February? If you're truly going to drag me there, like if you're getting me there. Like, I'm. A, it's a little like pulling teeth for me right now. It sounds awful. Like it better be those people. Better be a fucking riot. Yeah, I hang out with Bob Levy. Fucking riot. Are you gonna smoke a cigarette with Bob Levy? No, I'm not smoking a cigarette. I will jam a cigarette up my ass before I'll smoke. Will you it. jam it up his ass? I will jam it up Bob Levy's ass. You hear that, Bob? I'll jam that cigarette right up your back, cunt. <laughs> All right, let's watch this uh, police officer abuse a woman and then get fired tonight showing a police officer Ooh. this is in hall county body slamming a woman to the ground following a september arrest and now can i defend body slamming for a moment i think so if someone's resisting quite a bit you have to admit this it is a very quick effective and relatively safe way to subdue somebody I won't back you on the safe thing i'll agree to everything else okay a body slam you however think, uh, uh, oh here <laughs> I just body slam the mic. <laughs> what the fuck? You uh, but you you body slam someone. You catch a shoulder or something. Maybe you separate a shoulder. You fuck up a rib. I think you fuck up a rib in your back. Maybe but you got him down. That's fine. I'm totally for it. Usually because it's like, if you hadn't done something wrong, nobody's body slamming you. Like the cops. Usually, been there. usually. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. Vanna News First is taking your questions straight to the top of the Oakwood Police Department. I feel like this guy used to work here. He looks like someone. I feel like he used to work in Minnesota. Atlanta News First, Rachel Aragon. She's oh, we got another call coming in. Hold on a moment. Call from Fallen the Great. Fallen the Great, what's up, buddy? You don't have to do them like that. You should do them with an arm bar. Arm bar. Moss covered three fingered family <laughs> credenza. Here. Move five, arm bar. Look at her face. The Saskatchewan spinning nerve hold. Arm number eight, or move number eight. April, guess. Arm. It would be an arm, arm bar. bar. Okay. He's live outside of the department for us. That's about 90 minutes northeast of Atlanta. And Rachel, kind of go from the beginning here. What led up to the officer's uh, resignation? We know it's all stemming, though, from an arrest back in September of this year. But the police chief telling me earlier... <laughs> She's not there for her speaking abilities. <laughs> Wait, the police chief? The police chief. <laughs> police like, chief Keith. I like her. See, and Rick, they want to be as transparent as possible. And they also clarify again that that officer in question has resigned following an internal investigation. Here's how the resignation went. Uh, did you body slam that uh, that woman to the ground during that arrest the other night? Uh, no, I don't believe so. We have your body camera. If I step down, do I get full benefits? <laughs> uh, just wondering. You're going to go over the body cam? Oh, indeed we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, um, can we cut a deal where that thing just gets set on fire and lost forever if I just step away? You accidentally bleached it? What? Yeah. Sorry. Hey. How are you? 
I'm Austin Holbrook. How are you? According to a September police... Oh, please tell me he body slammed her. Oh, my God. Really? This is not what I would have seen. That would be great. Just a belly to belly. Park God, and Steiner pops them hips and it's a belly to belly. Report Officer Timothy Holmbrook responded to a business in September in reference to a theft and a dispute. The call resulted in the arrest of Annie for public drunkenness and obstruction of an officer. Oh boy, she's oh fucked no. up. The exchange between Annie and police resulting in this takedown. Can you please call Uber? We're trying to give you every chance in the book right now. I'm the f***ing Venom! Oh, 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 fuck. He fucking did it! Oh, he, he went a, for it. He had had it with that bitch. Oh, that bitch fucking cracked three ribs at least. I will say, as satisfying as it was to see that, yeah, you can't do that. She's a lot smaller than yeah, you. I feel you, like that was unnecessary. You cannot take someone down Here, like Yeah, that. okay, here's my opinion. If you're like a big dude, like you're a big man as a police officer, and then you've got like a tiny lady you're trying to subdue, like if you can't do that, I feel like you shouldn't be a cop. I think that's where the arm bar comes in handy. You could probably yeah. secure her with an arm bar, you know? Twisted dick. A full arm drag and twist. Or is it full arm dragon twist? I like a dragon twist. Nobody knows what Tony Schiavone ever said. Is it a full arm dragon twist or a full arm drag and twist? Or is it a dragon twist? That's what the argument has always been amongst wrestling fans. When no, I'm saying dragon. Like That's what we're saying. A okay. full arm dragon twist. I feel like we could go three ways with this. Or a full arm drag and twist. Full arm dragon twist. Or full arm drag and twist. That's it's maddening. What we're trying to. The police about. chief tells us after their internal investigation, they informed Officer Holbrook he would be terminated as a proposed punishment. Yeah. But before he was terminated, he resigned. As That's called ski fucking daddlin. Okay, but did she die? Maybe. We haven't heard <laughs> that part yet. I mean, he threw that bitch into hell. Okay, clearly where she belongs. Yes. Fucking Steven bitch. As a result, the chief says Holbrook is listed as resigned in lieu of termination and considered as ineligible for rehire with the city. Uh oh. But on his like service jacket, he can go to another town and it looks he it looks like he resigned. Oh, I just you know, it was time for me to move on. Right, he didn't get fired. You might get hired at another police department, though, if you tell them, yeah, I'm the guy who uh, uh, gave that chick the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. I'll tell you who, fucking Grady Judd. Yeah. I'll hire you. Did you hear what I said? We hired the guy who did the body slam. So if you're going to commit crime, he's going to slam you. Can you do a Wayne Ivy, too? He's just kind of more, he's still Southern, and it, but he's a little deeper than Grady Judd. He'd hire him. The department says Holbrook... Listen to me, son. I'm talking to you. If if Clay Higgins wasn't in Congress right now, which is fucking wild in and of itself. That is weird. That Clay Higgins... And by the way, cleans up nice, but looks like he's in the 1820s. I haven't seen him yet in Congress, I don't think. Oh, we'll watch no, Clay Higgins. No, we watched Higgins the video in, yeah. once. That's he right. does. He looks like he's got a pocket watch in there. We can look again if you'd yeah. like. Listen to me, son. I'm talking to you. We're going to put you in an arm drag. And then we're going to give you a belly to belly, because that's what we do. Brooks' file will be updated, and the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council will decide whether an investigation into his law enforcement certification will occur. Of course it won't. That's why he resigned. <laughs> they wanted him to resign this so they wouldn't over. have to spend the money doing the investigations, yes. and then in exchange for that, like, we won't totally butt fuck your career. I kind of feel like if you've resigned, that was your admission. Yeah. But, like, you're free to get out, kind of. Yeah. And that very officer that now resigned was with this department for less than a year. The chief telling me earlier he was brought on to this department this past summer. After an ACL injury in college football, and uh, he just uh, needed a place to work, you know. He we actually broke out of that institution that fucking Ace Ventura tried to go yeah, to. Yeah, he was in the Ray Finkel institution. The Ray Finkel institution. Unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't, didn't work out as well for him. Uh, let's, uh, chat's going a little crazy at the moment. I'll let it catch up here. Uh, would have been great if right after the slam, she started hulking up. Yeah, she just started, when he just starts hitting her and then she points at him. What the fuck? <laughs> just no words exchanged. Yeah, just, just. Wow, you know, that'd be something. All of a sudden she starts hitting him. The other cops get way too in. They go, one, two, three, and. Oh, uh, that's what the kids' PCP stash is for. I don't know. If we need I'm to with be. Mark. Damn body cams. Yeah, 
<laughs> Fuck those things. The old right? days where you used to be able to body slam a drunk bitch and get away with it because it was the drunken lady's word against. Imagine how many times that happened before body cams. No cell phones. It's the either. officer's word against the drunk, the person in the drunk tank. They're like, how'd you get that black eye? Uh, chief, they bumped into the car and they fell a couple of times. Like, we tried to keep them up. No, that motherfucker grabbed me by the face and slammed my head into the pavement. Like, I, sir, I didn't know such thing. Think about, like, the days before, especially, like, cell phones and shit like that. No cameras. Nobody can live stream anything. You can't and take a picture. Anybody who's a cop watching this show uh, right now goes, yeah, we call those the good old days. Exactly. Yeah. I could really clean up the streets. Oh, man. It was, uh, it was back in the days where the big boss man reigned supreme. Have you ever taken a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia? Just body slam your ass. I'm such a redneck, I think I like Boss Hog. But he'd just sit on you. Nah, Boss Hog didn't do shit, remember? No, he was too uppity. He had Boss to wear Hog was a businessman. He manipulated he had to wear behind his the white scenes. suits and yeah. have Roscoe go after everyone and fail. But Roscoe P. Miserably. Coltrane was a dipshit. Yeah, that's the problem. By the way, MC Ganey, hashtag my Roscoe P. Coltrane. Burt Reynolds, hashtag my Boss Hog. I will never be on your side with that. I'm sorry, just better actors. Better actors. Yeah, but for me, I'm definitely going the nostalgia route. Like, that's just for me. Well, I got to go kiss some hands and shake some babies. Don't you mean kiss babies and shake hands? Maybe that's why I lost that election for governor a few years back. <laughs> I think of punching babies. I think of the campaign. <laughs> Fucking slow-mo baby punch. Uh, better Will Ferrell movie, The Campaign or Talladega Nights? Talladega Nights. I agree. Close second, though. Uh, one of my favorite Sasha Baron Cohen roles, too. It's very Fucking good. Fucking awesome in that movie. That was, I think we the were- Ricky Booby. <laughs> we were looking it up, and that was like the last good movie Will Ferrell did. Like the last- Was that the last good one? The last consistently, like that was, you know how Adam Sandler had good movies after like The Water Boy, but it was mm -hmm. hit or miss? I th see, he I had think- Billy, He had Billy Madison, uh, Wedding Singer, Happy Gilmore- and Waterboy. And then after that, it was always like up and down. I will tell you, I don't think it's like a quality movie, but I will laugh at That's My Boy. That's actually, and I don't but like we don't Andy count Sandler. that as a We don't count that as a That's good movie. That's a standalone movie, like funny movie to me. Uh, let's go with actor. What the, f no, go back. I want actor. There we go. Uh, upcoming previous. Okay. Spirited, The Shrink Next Door, Eurovision Song Contest fucking ate ass. That was the worst movie I've ever seen. It's a bad seen. movie. Like, that's worse than Spaceballs, big time. Downhill, Between Two Ferns, Zeroville. Uh, then it's all TV series for fuck? a while. Where was the campaign? How old is that? Uh, oh, God. The campaign's like 2013. Really? Because I, I, I think that's a solid movie. Holmes and Watson it. was shit. Uh, he really hasn't done Holmes much. Holmes and Watson was bad. D Daddy's uh, Home Daddy's were actually Home decent. I don't think the second one was good, but the no. first one was okay. That was five. That was all. That's still five years ago. Uh, the house Zoolander two was awful. Uh, Daddy's home. So if you want to count Daddy's home as he hasn't had a good movie in seven years, that makes sense. Because how old is he now? Probably in his late He's getting mid fifties. Yeah. Get hard uh, was fucking get hard was bad. Weird. Yeah. Get hard was awful. Uh, then a bunch of videos. Anchorman two was shit. I mean. By. You and I like like to laugh at it, but, but it it's was a, a bad, shitty yeah. movie. It's a shitty movie, but it's funny. Yeah. You know? uh, so look, the campaign, 2012. So in oh, the last okay. 10 years, he's had two good movies. Okay. That's fair. Uh, then you have Casa de Mi Padre. He just didn't do a lot. Uh, Holy shit. Yeah, Everything Must Go. The Other shit. Guys was 2010. Yeah, 12 years ago. Oh my God. And even that movie was, uh, that's okay. I like that one. Land of the Lost was an absolute bust. That's what kind of sent him down, was kicking and screaming in that movie, bombed. And then people were like, yeah, yeah, enough of this. Have we seen guy. Everything Must Go yet? Has that been on the list yet? That's not a comedy, yeah. but I actually kind of like that movie. It's not a very good one, though. <laughs> uh, so then you had Step Brothers in 2008, Semi-Pro. See, it was always kind of like good movie, bad movie, good movie, bad movie. Blades of Glory was... Oh, that one does not age well. Stranger Than Fiction. So yeah, Talladega Nights. Before Talladega Nights, you had the producers. Wedding Crashers doesn't really count as his. Ooh, Kicking and Screaming. Holy shit, man. If you look back, Will Ferrell does not have a great run. What the fuck is Wake Up Ron Burgundy? These are like shorts. Uh, so you have Anchorman, Elf, God, that's Old School... 
he had like th- like twenty years ago. He had three good movies. Well, and then Will how long Ferrell was did his, not have a great run? How long was his stint on SNL? Five six years. That's I, respectable. But right? it's amazing to think that Will Ferrell did not have. Yeah, you think about Will Ferrell, you're like, oh, he's amazing. And you're like, he had just as many dog shit movies as good ones. Like, his career has gone very Adam sandler I was going to say, like, you could really compare it to Adam. Yeah. Big time. Mike Myers, too. Same thing. Oh, God. oh it, the fucking love guru. That is, what was that? Did you oh, hear that? Oh, five, oh, six? No. No, I heard a, a weird noise. No. Um, yeah, the love guru is really, really bad. I don't, yeah, Will Ferrell, Mike Myers, Adam Sandler. But who does? Like, well, you know, Mike Myers, that's not fair because Mike Myers was like 1992 with Wayne's World to like 20, uh, 2003 with um, Austin Powers and then all the fucking Shrek movies. I think, you know what? Low key, Michael My- Mike Myers had a better run than all those guys. I don't like Shrek, but I do understand that they were yeah, successful. Lo- yeah, I. I gotta say, Sandler or Myers probably had the best run out of those three. I'd agree. Maybe Sandler just because of sheer volume, like the amount of shit he put he, out. Right, that was like a shoot till you miss kind of guy. Yeah, and then he but kept feel, missing and kept shooting. But I feel like you put shit out there, like just go with it and stuff like that. And or Jack and Jill, you don't miss with the Zohan or yeah. Hubie Halloween. They're Oof. so bad. God, I forgot so about so bad. I forgot about Hubie Halloween. Ugh. That was a really, really bad movie. Rough. Yuck. Uh, I want to get to a couple of Brendan Schaub items. Is it overtime uh, already? Tonight. Yes, it's already uh, time Whoa. for overtime here. So we got to get to a couple of things. Uh, Kenneth writes, uh, <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> They're gay. Gino's gay. Gino's not funny. Is that what we do now in the chat? I was fucking dead to the world today. I did a damn near six hour stream last night till I was up till three forty today. Like afterwards, like trying to just wrap shit up. Fucking tired today. I missed the entire first start of the show. It was a this, uh, morning. this morning's show. If you haven't seen it, this morning's show was very, very good. Uh, you will enjoy it. It is absolutely worth going back to watch. Uh, let's see what we've got. Uh, oh yeah. Husey and I were being racist to each other, uh, earlier in the day. There's that Peter Griffin picture. Uh, uh you didn't see, uh, Husey and, uh, Bob Levy having some fun with us in their interview together. I don't think so. It was pretty funny. I am telling you, I got maybe two and a half hours of sleep. Uh, WATP had a lot of shout outs today on what? About like who? Us? Who are these? Like who are these podcasts? I I listened to the Gino episode from Saturday, but I don't. Uh, I should. I know that, that I know that they talked about us a lot, and they were of course very kind. They're our friends, of course, but uh, I don't. Did they do another episode? Do you know? Like last night, I believe Chrissy said that was the longest episode of Simcast ever. And A new record. I thought you said there was an eight-hour episode. I don't think so. At one point. Oh no! It started at. It started at eight. <laughs> our time. My bad. Uh, you, I was telling the audience uh, be- uh, before you got here that April doesn't, if she has a choice, if it's brought up to her, she doesn't let anybody else. She hogs all the Brendan Schaub for herself. Do I? You want the, sh- you well, said that. You, you do offer. Right. Like you, it's not like I come out of nowhere and say, make sure you don't give Brendan to somebody. No, it's but. Aaron gives me an option. But when you go, if I tell you these are what I have left, I go, mm-hmm. do you go, don't give Johnny Brendan. I would rather cover Brendan than Opie any day because at least like Brendan's like a bumbling fool and he's kind of cute in a way. Opie's just kind of crotchety and weird. Brendan's adorable in a weird way. And it's also fun to watch other people talk about him. Yeah. Because like other people talk about him in a way where it's like, he's an alien. You're like, how the fuck? I think the entire comedy world, and this is a compliment to Brendan Schaub. The entire comedy world doesn't know how the fuck this happened. Like one day, Joe Rogan yelled at this brain dead fighter who kept getting his head knocked off. And then the next day, the guy's like got Showtime specials and like is, has like a successful podcast. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait a minute. What in the name of the Brady's AstroTurf happened here? <laughs> the Brendan Schaub, really? Well, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and Steve O were doing a show together. They okay. were doing the show that uh, Steve O does in the bus. Yep. He drives around I, the I country and he interviews people. Steve O's Wild Ride is what it's called. Yep. And uh, 
they were shitting. They just started. And I think this happens to all of us when we talk about Brendan. They mentioned a slight of Brendan. They shit on Brendan a little. And then you go, fuck it. I can't resist. Yes. Let's go all in. I want to dig more into this. So let's go to uh, Steve-O and Tony Hinchcliffe. Who Tony Hinchcliffe is kind of one of those guys who he has like his core of friends mm -hmm. and he'll just shit on anybody else. Like right. He, he just keeps his close ones close. Like everyone else is free range. Doesn't really feel the need to reach out, you know, branch out. He's just like, you know what? I'd rather just make fun of everybody else. I don't know how I feel about Tony. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. I don't know. I like Tony now as he's becoming an old man, an older man than I did. When he was younger, it was kind of like, Who's this fucking punk? That's kind of how who's it felt. Who's just being cunty. Mm -hmm. And now that he, when he's older, like cunty, like grows on you as you get older. When you're doing it when you're younger, you're like, what a miserable fuck this kid is. What, like cunty becomes endearing? Right. Like at 40, <laughs> 45, you're like, oh, that, that that's fun. Is he that old? I bet you, no I bet way. you Hinchcliffe is in his 40s. What? Yeah. No I, way. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he was mid 40s. I don't feel that way. At this point. Let me see. I, I'm prepared to admit that I was wrong, but... Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh, God, this is so hard doing this on a phone versus a computer. Oh, he's 38. 38. He's the same age as Brendan. He's literally go. two years older than you. Yeah. You just called him an older man. <laughs> he seems older now. He's been around a while. He's been in the public eye for quite some time now. You're right. Let's watch uh, Steve-O and... Tony, talk about Brendan. Really easy. No airport. You mean the Arlington where Gringo Poppy was filmed? Wait, is that where? Is that <laughs> where that was filmed? That's the shittiest part. Like, this is what makes me feel bad for Brendan. There is no setup. No, Gringo it's... Poppy is just a punchline. And to everyone. I know. Everybody brings up Gringo Poppy, and you don't need to say it. Like, you know, there's that old hacky mm -hmm. joke, like, oh, you want to make people laugh? Just say this. But they don't laugh themselves silly. Mm -hmm. That's not a euphemism when it's Gringo Poppy. No. It seems... Steve O just said, hey, that's the airport where Gringo Poppy was performed, right? And they spoke, start laughing. It's just like an old nursery rhyme everyone knows. Like, it's fucking familiar. Yeah. It's bad. Or it's like when Dice had his nursery rhymes and he didn't even have to finish them at the end because yeah. people knew the rest. Everyone knows the story. So he'd just go, hickory dickory duck, and everyone would just start laughing. Now you can be Steve O and you go, Gringo Poppy? You're like, ah, uh -huh. <laughs> Gringo Bit. Yep, that sucked ass. A solid bomb. <laughs> And Steve O's an, I've met Steve O. Remarkably nice guy. Incredibly nice guy. I've performed with him. He's very sweet. He said I was funny. I knew he was lying, but he's a really nice dude. Humble brags. Come on. And uh, Steve O, like, for him to go, like, do you know how irresistible making fun of Brendan Schaub is if a Steve O can't stay away from it? Oh, it's like a drug. It's like watching a priest punch somebody in the mouth. It's like, okay, if that guy got punched in the mouth by a holy man, he must be a piece of shit. Oh, no. That's what Steve O making fun of somebody is. Oh, no. If Hinch Hinchcliffe will make fun of somebody because he skipped breakfast that day, he don't care. Okay. But Steve O to go, ah, Gringo Poppy, doesn't he suck fucking balls? And you're like, Steve O. <laughs> is it the, the the Dallas Improv Arlington? I think so. Yeah, that's where Gringo Poppy was filmed. Oh, no, Dude, <laughs> tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look at this! They're laughing themselves retarded because they just said Gringo Poppy. They're like creepy laughing over it. I know every comedian wants to be known, and who cares if it's because you're a puppeteer or you make a lot of money working cruise ships or whatever. as long as you're known and you're making a living, a lot of people are just happy to be in comedy but for brendan it's got to eat at him a little even though he's known and he's famous like what you're famous for is it worth it i would say like when most people think of brendan shop now they probably think of gringo poppy yeah and not in a good way and you know the the thing about uh brendan is i will give him this he does a very good job of dealing with it mm -hmm. i mean aside from the bobby lee and kalila shit although now we think kalila might have actually had something to do with that but also that had nothing to do, ironically, with his comedy. Right. But with uh, with Brendan, it's douchey what he did to Kyle from Unique. It's mm -hmm. douchey what he did to Bobby and Kalila. But like in terms of the gringo poppy getting shit on, he has learned a lot. And he's done a better job of just forging ahead and doing his thing. Just ignoring it. Just ignoring it. Blocking the haters, B. Blocking the haters, B. Yeah. 
Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How do you know that? How do you know that was filmed there? Um, I was fascinated by the entire <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, oh, Steve-O is shitting on He you. dug into it. Oh, buddy. I was fascinated. I kind of watched that like a Subruder film. I, kinda, I rewind it. I fast forward. I see it again. I go, catch new jokes that I didn't see before. How could it be that bad? Oh. Let's watch again. <laughs> <laughs> I even know where the construction paper came from. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know who cut it out. <laughs> this is like, see, That's almost. You can see in Steve-O's face. He's like, I don't usually do this. I can't help myself. There's a weird level of shame to it, but you still did it. There is a weird level of shame. Now, Tony is an evil son of a bitch. So he loves this because he's watching Steve-O turn to the dark side. And Steve-O right. goes, I know I'm doing a shitbag thing that's out of my character. But this is how bad this special was. This is fucking Darth Vader chopping off Luke's arm. Yes. This is the Emperor over here. Right. <laughs> no, this is Anakin cutting off Dooku's head in episode three. And then Anakin, the, the, the Emperor is like, yes, kill him, Anakin. Feel the hate flow through yeah. you. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Yeah, we all are. We're all very fascinated about it. It was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just like I'm particularly close to that because of the known for other things coming into stand up. Like um, first, right? But in fairness, <laughs> well, I think here now this is where because Steve O's a good guy. Now he feels bad. Now he's gonna try and throw in a nice thing in there. Like I relate to Brendan. This and that. But in fairness to Steve-O, Steve, I, I interviewed him on the radio and he says, I'm humble about it. I, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. My sets are getting better. Uh, I kind of got a shortcut into the business, but I'm, I'm really working hard to become a better comic. You know, I, I lean on my crazy stories from the jackass days on stage, but I also mix in some material mm -hmm. in there as I continue to get better. I think that's why Steve-O gets a pass from a lot of people. And Brendan gets hated because Brendan, like I've always said before, landed on third, born on third base, thinks he hit a triple. Sure. You know? Yeah. And Steve-O goes, boy, I really am blessed and thankful for that you guys put me on third well, base. Well, he humbles and I appreciate himself. It. Right, exactly. Whereas Brendan just did this thing where he's like, yeah, B, I'm a fucking monster. I'm a b -b -b beast in comedy. And I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell him about comedy, B. And he's a b beast. And he's going to just crush and this. And he would just be a bro douche about it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I got a Showtime special. Well, now you put yourself way up here and you didn't earn it. Nobody respects you. So now as the Showtime went away and you had to do your next special on YouTube, uh, which anybody could do that, just film a comedy set in their basement and call it a special and upload it. Uh, as all this stuff started to go away, you got in trouble. People found out you're kind of a jealous piece of shit. They're going to enjoy it versus if anything bad ever happened to Steve-O, people would go, oh, man, I feel bad for Steve-O. He's a good guy, well, you know? He's got, like, a like a endearing little story, too. Like, oh, he got clean and stuff like that. Right. Like people look at him that way. Yeah, whereas Brendan's face is turning Brendan's into just, booze bloat. It's all them Kratom shots. Yeah. Special on Showtime, you know? Yeah. And then, like, uh, putting out the second special on, on you know, yeah. on your own. 35 minutes. 25. It was it really? 25. Oh, no. Oh, come on. See, they enjoy it, though. He knows the exact number. They, uh, 25 minutes and uh, 34 seconds, actually. <laughs> I watched it last night again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. It's like, uh, it's like death by a thousand self-inflicted paper cuts or something. It's, like yeah, that. It, it, it's it's pretty intense. Um, but yeah. how about that? How wow. about these two comics laughed themselves until they pissed, or laughed until they pissed themselves, and now they're sitting here being sad about you. <laughs> like they, I don't want. Right, I don't ever want to be talked about this. You way. Like fall down some like weird black hole where it's like it starts as a funny thing, but you get sucked in and you realize it's not funny anymore. But that's always our thing with Brendan too. Is we make fun of him and then we go, "I'm sure he's a decent enough idiot. Like he's just a big dumb guy, big dumb he's jock." Lenny. Yeah. Like now I feel bad. But don't worry, Theo Vaughn's gonna shit on him now in a minute, and we're gonna talk about Dude, that. Dude, I kind of feel like I have to. 
This is going to sound bad. Like Watch I, Gringo Poppy. I feel like I have to watch Gringo Poppy just to understand how bad. Because I haven't seen it yet. I have. I Yeah, I haven't. I feel it sounds like a quick watch. It's, uh, oh. <laughs> it's not good. Really? Like, what's the worst part? What do you mean? The whole thing is a like, joke about what? how his wife's Mexican. Oh. It's the whole fucking Mexican, thing. Mexican, you mean? Mexican. It's the whole goddamn 25 minutes is he lives in a house with a Mexican. We have Mexican kids. <laughs> the way your lip just quivered bothered me. Oh, I don't ever like want to really watch. Into that. Like if you don't watch that on a low volume, if I hear a word of the I won't Gringo do it Poppy, when you're around. I will go insane. I will not do you it. You can when go you're upstairs around. after the show while I'm prepping and you can watch Gringo Poppy. I'm not that excited about it. Oof. You just have to go on I'm YouTube. I'm very tired. I need something to fall asleep to. Don't turn on Gringo Poppy then you won't sleep. You'll be too fascinated. I'm really hungry too. Yeah. Yeah, like so. So I was particularly, you know, it's like ah, uh, and, and I, I don't know. I just I, I care a lot, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You um, still feel that way though, because people are always saying like. Yeah, you know, I mean, hey, Tom you know what, gave like, you. Tom yeah, that's the end of it. So he's like, that's a juxtaposition of Brendan. He's saying, I still care though. It insinuating that Brendan's just in it for, all of the wrong reasons. Yes. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, uh, oh guys, you don't have to delete Jonathan's, uh, comment there. Uh, that's kind of why we're not really saying much is that's, I don't know. I mean, to yeah, me, you do have to delete that comment, I think. Oh, do you? You, uh, cause that genuinely is a, like not a concern, well, kind of a concern of mine is that that's, it's heading that way. Uh, let's talk to, or let's talk to, uh, let's go into the Dave Portnoy, uh, Theo Vaughn incident. With Brendan Schaub. So Brendan and Dave Portnoy have this weird co-promotion where Barstool Sports puts on these fight cards mm -hmm. and then like Brendan gets fight companion rights and it gets co-promote. Like it's a it's a big co-promotion yes, between the is. two of them. And I guess Brendan promoted Theo for the fight companion, which was news to Theo Vaughn. Uh-oh. Uh, let's check this out here. Uh, Dave Portnoy, obviously very busy uh, avoiding Alex Stein, apparently, and we'll play that tomorrow morning on the show. And, like, before you do that, like, last night he was talking about how he was going to do that. Yeah. It was so weird to, like, hear a setup to an Alex Stein bit, and then I haven't watched it yet. One smart thing he did, though, because I heard him last night, and I'm like, bro, that's a bad idea. Uh, he yeah. didn't use an actual homeless guy. He used a comic. I mean, right, that is that a good a idea guy. because homeless people are unstable at best, usually. How dare you? The, yeah. I've been, I can say that one of them spit in my face in New York once. Well, there you go. I hear they've gotten worse since. My anecdotal story. Yes. Are the numbers not right? What's going on? Are you doing the stream? No. I don't know. I didn't make that deal. I don't know. <laughs> I just got put on the flyer, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Shab, it look, it, I saw it's Shab, it's your face. Who are the other two faces on that flyer? Do you know the flyer I'm talking about? Mm. It's Joey Diaz, but he got replaced. Oh no! So Brendan what? put so Brendan put a couple of people on this flyer for his big fight oh. companion thing, and at least two people are like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. You can't do that. He's pulling the if you book them, they will come. Yes. Move. <laughs> like he's pulling I'm a gonna, Wayne's World too. Like I'm gonna put their face on this flyer, and they're just gonna show up for me. You know why he booked uh, Joey Diaz and uh, Theo Vaughn? There was a naked Indian in his dreams with Jim Morrison, who told See? him that he should book the two of them. Wouldn't oh, you? Oh no. I guess. Didn't you find it a bit inappropriate for the entire bottom of the Indian to be exposed? <laughs> yes! And then is, it, is, Theo, is Theo's face still on the flyer? Yeah. Plastered all over the flyer. Look at that. Yeah, there's Theo. Oh. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about this. I will look into it, though. I appreciate it. And that's Joey, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> you appreciate it. We didn't. It wasn't through us. And was that uh, was that Quentin Rampage Jackson or who was that other I'm guy? I'm not sure. If it's not a fighter, then I was just being really racist. I wasn't, yeah. And I, I saw was, a large black man. I went, oh, he must be a fighter. I was unsure of the large black man. Yes. Oh, well, it wasn't. If it is Quentin Rampage Jackson, I hope one of those fucking comics shows up. Don't leave me in a room alone with Rampage Jackson. Will you Jackson. fill them up? Or fill up, wait, fill what? in for them? Oh, with Rampage, that'd be fun. If that is Rampage. I have no idea who that black guy was, though. Would you take a punch just to be there? Feeling, no, that was on the fight companion. They were not on the fight oh, card. Right. Yeah, that oh, was on a show. What? I'm getting too excited. Yeah. Through me, that's what I'm saying. I feel like this is like, 
We both been we're being sex trafficked, bro. I don't know how this is oh. happening, son. That's so. What I'm do saying. I have your? He's like so. <laughs> okay, that's and that's the end of it of Unique's clip. Subscribe to Unique, of course. Good guy. Quality man. Yeah, good. <laughs> she's fun, she's what, funny. He's funny guy. What else did a uh, Unique have to say about all that? About the Brendan Schaub thing? He just loves shitting on Brendan Schaub. Um, oh, what did he have to say about it? Oh, well, he had to say this. <laughs> which I agree with wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Todd writes, I can't figure out how to feel about Portnoy. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was, like him some days, and then other days I don't, and then... I was just finding myself sitting here thinking, like, if you and I went somewhere and, like, met him... Like, is that a guy you want to have a beer with? Yeah, I'd want. Uh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, it'd be, be you know, a pleasure to meet you, sir, and everything else. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. he's never done anything shitty to me. That's see, that's kind of how I always operate. Like, how have you been to me lately? Yeah, <laughs> is it good? Okay, then. Like the the whole thing between him and Alex, I thought Alex kind of embarrassed him in their little back and forth feud they had. I thought Dave kind of came yeah. off as kind of aloof, and Alex just kind of hammered on him, but you know. On this one, uh, like, he got to have Theo on, and Theo got to make Brendan look stupid, and that's always kind of fun. That's also true. Yeah. So there you go. Another Brendan Schaub coverage from the old Steel Toe Show, and we're finding out tonight that just say Gringo Poppy, <laughs> and you get a laugh. <laughs> uh, Brian says, Aaron, did you see when Brendan tricked Portnoy coming on the show, telling him it was Theo's show? Is that a... Real thing. Let's, you know what? We're in overtime. Fuck it. Let's look it up. Uh, Brendan Portnoy. What were you looking at? Did you see that video? No, that was a suggestion. That wasn't me watching it. Okay. Theo Von exposes Brendan. Yeah, everything is about this, the latest Mm. thing that just came up. I hear that Theo has been kind of low-key shitting on Brendan lately, that it's it's all starting to kind of come out. I feel like I hear Unique reporting on that a lot. Yeah, that it's kind of... It's, it's not totally out there yet, but it's getting there, so to speak. Uh, Alex got the Kumia treatment. I don't know what that means. Uh, you get fired from Sirius XM. I, yeah, the Kumia treatment? Yeah. Yuichi says that was when Tim Dillon was the co-host instead of Theo, the old bait and switch on Portnoy. Oh, so it was about a year ago or so. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Did you, uh, did Unique fall asleep again 10 times on his show while he was on heroin? I don't think he does heroin. I have no confirmation. Probably not heroin. (laughs) That he does heroin. I think Um, the man maybe drinks a little bit. I think he maybe enjoys his beverages. Ah, who doesn't? Right. It's not a crime. What do you want to do? Throw the guy in jail? Should hear Aaron talk when he has four beers. Four. After a third one, I'm kind of, you know, it's I time to start. I was giving you a manly upper It's hand time to start there. calming down, you know. I can you, get buzzed on a budget. Thank you. Aaron sometimes shits on me like, oh, you don't, you know, you enjoy making me so not manly. I just gave you an extra beer. Uh, Jonathan says I could, le- I legit couldn't watch Brendan's comedy special 10 to 15 minutes was enough. Oh, that sounds like you finished actually, it. <laughs> no, in fa- in fairness, that's a pretty solid length. Is it that bad? It's like that bad? I have a hard time believing it's like, I don't want to say it again. You know what I mean? Like, obviously it's not good because that's the consensus. But. I mean, uh, oh boy, four hours ago, Opie, why would I be jealous of anything Anthony does? This isn't worth its own segment, so I think we can just check this one out real quick. Okay. I'm not going to take a 90-second video and make a 20-minute thing about it. We needed two OP videos today. So, all right, let's see. For Again, for a guy who's over it and it's done, it's just all the goddamn time with mm-hmm. this guy. All right, let's, uh, let's see what the Opster has to say. Uh, would you be jealous if Anthony gets Kanye on the comp? Well, why would I be jealous of anything Anthony does? Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Just relax. The guy asked a fucking question. Let's not fly off the handle. Yeah. Why He's going to fly off the handle, isn't he? But why can't you just answer that? Right. Like, no, nah, I don't give a shit. Or you, even if he would, like, yeah, I'd love to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, it just seems so easy. You think Anthony's getting him on compound? If he went on Gavin's um, show, he'd go on Anthony's I heard show. him talk about that, like, a little bit today, I think, while he was gaming. He, he kind of just seemed like it was, you know. Oh, he did a gaming whatever. show today? He was gaming today. I haven't watched it yet. Holy fuck. No. Have Jeez. fun with Kanye. 
Kanye is legit crazy. Whoa, guys, hot take from the Obster. So, wait, you're put telling... Your, put your gloves on, April. These are hot takes coming out. Ooh, can't touch them with your bare hands. Kanye's crazy. But hold on, you can't have fun with crazy? Right. I feel like that's the most fun you're going to have. Says the guy who used to step on homeless people's cakes and throw their gifts all over the studio. Yeah, and... that is the most disheartening part for me is like all the bits he used to fucking do on the ONA show. Yeah. And then he has the nerve to like sit here and like get brownie points socially, be like, oh, I could never talk right. to this guy, you know. Legit. He's a babbling fool. And anyone that defends Kanye is completely pathetic. It's like, oh, I think uh, this gives me an opportunity to show some of my racism. I'm going to support Kanye West. That voice, Did by the way, break him? great voice. That's a no. It's a character voice. You see, Mister Hughes does cactus. Mm. That's what that was. Is anyone really supporting the garbage that Kanye says? No, it's no. just wild to hear him say the shit. And if you can get him in front well, of a microphone where you won't get banned for playing it, it's. You get to have it on your show. That kind of is like what Anthony said, I think, about like uh, Kanye going on Infowars, too. That's just, you don't have to sit there as Alex Jones and agree with anything he said, but right. it sure is good for your show exposure. Right. Like, you I know? think YouTube has pretty much cut it off. Like, Yeah, you can't do that here. They took down a couple of our videos because we played the Gavin interview. So I I, I think that uh, they're, they're pretty much done with Kanye. But if you have an independent platform mm -hmm. or Rumble or anything like that, yeah, I mean. Why wouldn't you? Why not? Yep. For real? I, I, we thought he was nuts a million years ago when he you know, stood up there with uh, Mike Myers for a little. Right. It's funny then. Mm -hmm. It's funny now thing about uh i don't know whatever hurricane it was and then he he just went off and 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 we played it on opie and anthony went this was a million years ago we're like holy shit kanye's crazy and i bet you had no fun with it <laughs> i bet you had no giggles. oh they they had a blast God. are you fucking kidding me yeah isn't that weird you just said oh yeah we played it on opie and anthony we made fun of how crazy it is oh but now it's not okay there was a the word fun in there somewhere. Yeah. Like, you could still do that. Hey, at least he's got a microphone now to step up. Uh, you really? know what? That's yeah. true. John Quartz, he's off his meds and needs help. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> not going to feel sorry for Kanye West, but he's Ooh. he's absolutely a loon. Hot and take. I think if you support him, Catch you're, him. Uh, you're absolutely pathetic. Catch him. Hot takes come. Hot this takes is... coming from Opie. Hot takes. I feel no heat. Yeah. Like, that is so, what a dumb, boring answer. It really honestly. is a great Gene Lundergaard show, isn't it? It is. Like, there's nothing stimulating about it. Right. That, Alex that Stein just me. dropped Portnoy vid. No, he dropped a Portnoy vid uh, earlier today. I'm uh, sure that's storming, what they're talking about. Storming bar stool. We've got that one for uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, Alex Stein Portnoy. Yeah, this, I mean, this was a while ago, uh, this morning, here, today. Upload date, today. Uh, oh, five minutes ago. Oh. Did he put a different one up, or is this just... Oh, he just uploaded it on YouTube. This is the same one that we all saw on Twitter. What is that one? Oh, this looks wild. Okay. Oh, yeah, he got, he got, you know, Alex actually did take a few smacks for this one. I, I liked your tweet a lot. You said it correctly. He's got some balls. Yeah. he's He does things that nobody else is willing to, and, like, I, I'm i not willing to put myself out there where I might fucking get hurt by somebody. I mean, don't get me wrong. He, he does. He's out of his mind. Yeah, absolutely. But, he, yeah, he's got balls to go do shit like that. Right. I mean, to go into a place knowing that you're probably getting hit. And hit, then arrested, the shot. escorted out of places. Like, you don't know. He's got like that. He's got such a baby face and like such an innocent demeanor about him. You don't realize he's like a big kind of doughy guy. Like he's got some size to him. You <laughs> okay. know, he's like, he's, he's doughy. He's about my size. He's thick. That's kind of, yeah. he's last night on the show. I think he said he's six, four. So, so he's yeah, almost he's about, six, four. He's about your size. Yeah. I'm almost about six, four as well. Huh. You, you two could scrap. It's like we're twins. <laughs> Alex, that's him saying he wants to be bros. Oh, is that is that what he's meant by that? He just wants to be bros. I'm talking about you. Talks more shit about the Vikings. I'll let him know that he's just uh, going to back that shit off He right covered away. so many fucking insults so quickly last night. Was, he gets nervous, I I, think. I took a nervous. deep breath and just kind of sat back for a second. I'm like... <clears throat>
Alex is one of those <laughs> guys going. where if you get him on tilt, you kind of just let him go. And you're like, I know you're saying hurtful things to me, but you also kind of, like we said on that show, you were kind of coming off as an asshole. And I don't want to stop you if other people are watching you going, oh, this person's coming off like a total dick. And it did, but it yeah. was very interesting, very fun. Uh, they're saying Aaron and Alex boxing match. I, I right. wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't have a boxing match with anyone who doesn't have any training. I don't think that's fair. I don't. Do I, I don't know? think it's I don't think it's fair to go like if someone says oh no I train and I bought you know I know how to box I mean like, okay yeah fine that'll be fun let's do it but like I'm not gonna go in there you know knowing like because anybody can go in and start swinging but if you you know if you're a guy who knows angles and you know where to step this and is shit where like boxing that, it's very boring <laughs> but that's uh, it's also not fair because if you know that shit and another person doesn't like you could hurt somebody and you don't want yeah do that. I think most people you don't want you don't do understand that. that uh. April versus Gila Klein. Oh boy, got a lot of reach. No fucking, yeah. Got a lot. She got a lot Hila of reach. Gila Klein's on been fucking feeling herself lately on Instagram. By the way, can I tell you, she's uh, into herself right now. I'll tell you this right now. I if I were you, I would not box Gila Klein. Why? You gotta remember, she was in the Israeli Defense Force. Oh no, I have no interest. I, yeah, I've. I don't want to hit Gila Klein, and I don't yeah. want to be hit by her. She, I, she's very much doing well right now. She looks like one of those people who you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll fight her. And then she see, gets into the ring. Sneaky. You're like, oh, look, she's a murderer. She just kind of looks weird and, like, breakable because she's so skinny. Right. You know what I mean? She just looks like she's not got anything to her. Yeah, Jay says a trained boxer will fuck up a guy with no training every time. Yeah, it's not even well, It's yeah. not even close. I didn't think that even needed to be said. It's not even close. It's so... Uh, so no, I would I would not do that. If someone didn't have training, I would not. If someone was do like... Do you know if he ha does or not, though? I don't. But that's what I'm saying. Though. I don't if, either. If, if you don't, I'm not interested. I don't... I'm not in it to do that to people. Uh, all right. That's, that's going to do it for tonight. That is it. All right. We have done it. And uh, we... Oh, they said Alex has a boxing... That'd be kind of fun to watch. So maybe he does then. See how he does? Or is it like a funny, like, ha ha, I tried it kind of boxing video let's see let's check it out knocks out doing box match from 13 years ago at lsu okay that was in 2009 in college i mean that's <laughs> that's a little different but all right oh it was like a a, a college gimmick oh, kind of a thing tiny <laughs> Let's see if they actually know how to buy. The lighting's terrible. Oh, they've got the giant, like, the big cartoony gloves yeah, on. They're big oh, ones. Like okay. the blow up ones. Oh, yeah. They, they're not boxing. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. Okay, so the answer is no. He has not boxed. <laughs> that is just two guys going in there going. Would yeah. you do that with him? You just smack him around a little bit. No, I don't want to smack. Like, that's just it. I don't want to smack him. I'm just it. kidding, too. I don't want to smack course. anybody Look what around. you make me do. Of course, I wasn't serious. Sam Hyde would be an interesting one because Sam Hyde boxes. Did you follow that guy yet? Uh, Start no. Start talking to him. I don't use Instagram, so it's going to take me a minute. You're going to need to learn to. So. Like, you always tell me, like, oh, you got to learn the internet. Well, so do you. That's, sometimes. Where, I, that's like, where I booked Ricada was through Instagram. There's a lot of people on Instagram. I did. Uh, no way. Get the hell right out of town. What? What? All right, guys, that's going to do it. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning. April will actually be on the morning show. It's going to get snowy. Oh, I, wanna, uh, I wanted to mention this to you guys. We're going to be a little late here. I know you uh -oh. want to go to bed. Oz wrote me something weird. Um, like something that's worth broadcasting like, to yeah. everyone or private? Yeah, no, 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 no. This is, okay. this is fine because this is just me interpreting. Um, I don't know, man. I, does Oz like not? You want me to look? I don't know if Oz... Well, no, I want to read it to you and you tell me how it sounds to you. Okay, I'm nervous. I don't know if Oz wants to do the show anymore. Okay. I'll be honest. Uh, he says, due to the impending storm starting tomorrow morning... Oh, due to the impending storm starting tomorrow morning, I'm going to err on the side of caution and say I'm not coming in tomorrow. You should probably just fire me. I've been at jobs before. I would have gotten fired for a lot less, LOL. And then I wrote, you can't get fired for watching out for your safety, 94. 95 is a shit show. And then he goes, LOL, dot, 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 thanks. That, that kind of came out of nowhere. Like, that's either a really paranoid comment or insinuating something. I don't know. Right. I, I really do hope, like, if anyone 
like ever didn't want to do the show that they would say yeah, something. Like I mean, they would feel comfortable saying right. that. Just say so. Just I be don't like, want yeah. to make up that mind or make up that for him. Like maybe he didn't mean that at all. Then yeah. I kind of don't want to put that out there. And then everyone's like, oh, Oz doesn't want to be here. I don't want that happening. He might just be being silly. If, right. if I thought he was one, very silly, if I thought it was more than 50% serious, I would not bring it up on the show. I'd bring it up to him. But I think it's kind of a 50-50 ball. Were you just seeing what everyone else thought about that? Yeah. I kind of want to see what you thought, what everybody else thought. I think one of two things. He was being silly or he was being a little paranoid and nervous about Or maybe it. he was being silly, but he was also going, right? I want to eat something. Uh, Alex Stein can replace Oz. Uh, I, would, I would do Johnny or I would offer it to Erock. Perhaps spicy. That could be an interest. I would love you to and do a show seem with to have thing. quite the relationship. Yeah, I would like. Uh, oh God, this would draw a lot of hate, and people would go crazy. Uh, Gino Bisconte <sighs> for Tuesdays. Watch people lose their minds. All right, guys, uh, that's gonna do it for tonight. April, you can get some sleep because you got to work in the morning. Yeah, I completely didn't, uh, yeah. you know, I forgot about that. And uh, we will talk to the rest of you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Central Time. Take it easy. Like the video that we just did. Hit and like really helps us out a bunch. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Again, we are closing in on 7,000. Before we head out here, we will give you the correct number of how far we are away from that 7,000. We are 40 away from 7,000, so we're getting very close. Talk to you tomorrow morning, and be good until then.